podcast is intended for mature audiences. The views and opinions expressed are those of the panelists and do not reflect in any way those of the podcast partners, sponsors, or affiliates. Enjoy. Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. You know the saying, stay hungry, stay humble. Boxing Voice. I'm hungry, I'm humble in defeat, and I'm going to remain humble in victory. This is it, right? I just wanted to put on a great boxing masterclass and also show the sweet science of this lovely sport. Man, the first time was so nice, I had to do it twice. I'm prepared to the best of my capability and I pray that I get a win. Look at him, I love Mike Tyson, how he came into the game on some different kind of vibe. It takes a crazy man to want to fight, you know what I mean, day in, day out. The hardcore sport, as you said, no silk shoes. Always there for your boxing voice. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio. I am your host, Nesta Gibbs, joined alongside Gross, the boss, and we will be talking this weekend's actions. We will be previewing, predicting all this weekend's fights, as well as talking about all big headlines like AJ fighting in Turkey. Now, I don't know how far Portugal's from Turkey, but it's hot. So if it's happening out there, I might just be going. I made a stop one time in uh, uh, in the airport of Turkey, and it was crazy, plus great weather. Um, and what I hear is, you know, with 300, you could live like a king for at least a week and a half. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, plenty of stuff to talk about. Uh, Julian Williams defending his titles, uh, the return of El Delir Alvarez and Michael Seals. Uh, we spoke about Joshua and his potential opponent, Pulev, in Turkey. And then and obviously we, we will be discussing a um, bunch of stuff with our two guests. We're going to have Tony Harrison, former WBC champion. And we also have current WBC champion in 154 pounds, Patrick Texeria from Brazil. So let me head on out over to my co-host in Indiana and get this thing started. I speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. I can't say it enough. I speak it, believe it, receive it. Two attempts, handed bands over. Sicko hit, shot and missed. Two to stand over. Bread winner, huh? Look who in the building. Let let me check my Instagram. I might be at a million. And I'm in. Boxingwins.com. Yo, 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 yo. What up, what up, what up? And shout out to everybody out there in the TBB universe, man. We back with another one. Thursday night, flagship edition. A lot of fights this weekend. We got uh, the show box on Friday night. Then we got Julian Williams on Saturday. Then we got The Storm versus Seals on Saturday, too. And also, we got a lot of news and notes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my guy, Tevin Foreman, came out and responded back to uh, Gary Russell on IG. A lot more news and dose. We, we got the uh, Shields and ha- Habazin numbers, and we have the Jesse Hart and um, my guy named Joseph Jr. numbers, too. So we'll talk about that and break it down. What's going on, Ness? Chip, what up, Dan? What my girl Clarissa Shields did? 288000 Oh, my God. I don't part with with, with the other Showtime of uh, people though outside of Tank who did I guess it bumped up to like five or six but I Jamel mean you right else. Jamal did two fifty right two forty eight something like that somewhere around there yep damn bro but that's that's what I'm saying Jamal wasn't doing a unified it just sucks man it just sucks man and, and if that's Showtime what did the Zone do with Franchon Cruz and Alejandra they probably did probably. Uh, I don't know. Gotta, Mike, Mike, send me Mike, uh, my- Mike, 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 you know the zone don't release numbers. Stop, man. Why are you always trying to help them, man? I was going to say, man, uh, with Jaime fighting, you know what I'm saying, it could have possibly pulled in some, some people, some viewership. That's all I'm saying. And you know, if it would have, they'd have been over here parading them numbers like they always do. Whenever it's hot, they throw them out there. When it's cold, they stay far away from the news. But uh, I just want to remind everybody, we got a few guests in about mm, 21 minutes. We'll have 
former WBC champion Tony Harrison at 154 pounds. Then at 8 o'clock, we'll have WBO Patrick Teixeira. And then later on, we've rescheduled Joshua Greer. So we should be all ready to rock and roll with Mr. Greer. Mike, where you want to where you want to take it off, man? You want to start off with uh, Let's start with the unified champion. You know what I'm saying? Only one place to start. Unified champion Julian Williams is back in action this weekend. He's in Philly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, taking on Yetson Rosario in a 12 round fight for uh, Williams IBF WBA and IBO title. You know what I'm saying? I, I know he still got it somewhere around him. But uh, yeah, man, I uh, I think I, I've seen Yetson fight like once. Maybe twice on PBC. He, he, I wasn't impressed with you know what I'm saying what I seen from him. You know what I'm saying, but it wasn't to the level of Julian Williams. You know what I'm saying, and Julian Williams, I think his mind is screwed on. You know what I'm saying, you don't really see him it, like this. Doesn't even like feel like a home homecoming fight for him. You know what I'm saying, he, uh, I, I don't know if it's the promotion or his his mindset because he he, he seems focused and it seems like he's ready to do the business. Like he not, he's not trying to have one of these. Uh, Jared Heard kind of letdowns, you know what I'm saying? And when the name Jared Heard was brought up, he, he wouldn't even speak about it, you know what I'm saying? Because he's so focused on this fight this weekend. So we'll get to that after uh, this fight. But yeah, man, I got I got Julian Williams, man. No, no upset pick here. Yeah, I mean, Francisco don't. He says in the super chat, Fortuna and Rosario para la cultura and the new... For the culture is what that stands for. He says, Fortuna and Rosario for the culture and the new. So you already know, um, De Lo Mio. But nah, I ain't going with Henderson or Jenison. I ain't going with Jenison. I, I I don't know him like that, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna stick with the with the with the Julian Williams. I love Julian Williams. I love that lead hand, how he keeps it so high. That's that's discipline. To be able to keep that hot, that hand that 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 high to catch all those jabs, that's discipline. And uh, stamina, you know what I mean? You got to keep that up. So uh, I really like uh, Williams. Um, you know, Williams is actually the reason why Charlo doesn't like me, right? The bigger brother uh, because of that fight. Because, you know. Oh, no, it was the Trout. It was the Trout fight. I oh, guess yeah, both. He, I mean, both of them. I mean, look. <laughs> yeah, because like, I gave a little bit of rounds to those guys. Like, they're I mean, not supposed yeah. to win rounds, you know. Charlo got to win them all. I don't I understand, like, why guys do that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are in the competitive fight with another A level fighter. Like, don't get touched. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have success, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You still won. So I don't get why guys hold grudges like that. Yeah, me neither. But I, I think that um, Julian is disciplined enough to uh, do everything that he has to do where he doesn't uh, take this fight and. Um, underestimate his opponent i think that like you said he's focused he's dialed in and he'll do exactly what he was supposed to do yeah man i, I totally agree man uh julian williams i think he's uh he's might be poised to be taking over this uh division if, if he can come through this fight and uh, i don't know if, how likely the rematch were heard it but if, if it's not then i know jamel uh been wanting that, that unification for a while so uh, we'll see how that plays out, but I think he may have to go through Heard one more time before it's all said and done. Yeah, it looks like Heard wants his rematch, and like I said, he's training with K. Kamara out there. He's about to have his tune-up, so he'll know uh, firsthand will he be able to make the weight, and I guess that's when you know they'll get to the negotiations. They both signed with Al, so they'll be okay. Uh, but on the undercard, man, we got the good... Good scrap between uh, first-time title challenger and Chris Colbert, a.k.a. Young B-Hop, a.k.a. The Golden Child, a.k.a. Prom Tom. Going to be taking on former world champion Jezreel Corrales for a vacant WBA interim junior lightweight title. Junior lightweight being 130 pounds, for those that don't know. So uh, that's a very interesting and bold Move because everyone else is there. Tevin Farmer. You know, uh, Shakur was on the show a couple days ago. He said he's moving up. So, Colbert is right there in those great divisions. I mean, you got to think of Tank Davis as well. He's possibly moving back down to fight Leo. Leo is there. 130 is smoking hot right now. And if Colbert can look sexy in this win... Man, that's going to put him all over the map. Um, but 
Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm going definitely Colbert, man. I'm excited for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just hope he does well. Shout out to you know what I'm saying Chris Colbert here. You know what I'm saying came in and did the uh, I think was it the, the the pink or the green looking guy? I, I forget what color it was, but he definitely you know what I'm saying uh, looked sharp in that suit. You know what I'm saying look very very business like today. You know what I'm saying I like what I'm seeing. Uh, from Chris, just from 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 that standpoint, you know, what I'm saying I'm not even getting into the ring, but he looks like uh, a nice young professional boxer. You know, what I'm saying I like like to see a young man you know, out here wearing suits and looking looking like king and things like that. So big up to Chris Colbert, but yeah, man, yes, I mean, uh, just a real uh, Corrales man. Look, um, I know he, I know, I know he's a good fighter. I know he's been in there with some good names, but right now, man, it's. It, it's a motherfucking storm coming. I'm talking about the T.O. Fimos of the world, the Dusha Core Stevenson of the world, the, the, the Devin Haney's of the world. And now we're going to see Chris Colbert get his chance too. These young guys are coming, and they're coming to take over the sport. And I don't think they land down for anybody. Like Ness said, man, what, four, five years ago, six, seven years ago, he came up to Ness, man, with all his amateur belts and things like that. Like, bro, you're going to be interviewing me one day. I will be world champion. And now he got this motherfucking chance to really realize his dream. And that's what it's all about, man. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Seven years later, shit don't happen overnight. Seven years later, speak it, believe it, receive it, man. I mean, this is a great barometer fight. Um, this guy has lost by KO to Alberto Machado, who used to be the WBA uh, regular champ. At one point, he was super, and then they said, nah, you ain't popular enough. We're giving that to Javante. Uh, and this guy also lost to Ladarius Miller. Now, he he did beat uh, Robinson Castellano, which is a good... Ladarius fight at 130? Huh? Oh, 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 135. Who? Ladarius. Ladarius fought at 135. Okay, so this fight is at 130, though. This fight is at 130. Right, gotcha. Je Jezreel fought three fights at 135, uh, you know... One at 33, one at 37, one at 34. So, uh, but, you know, this is a good name. He's got two wins over Takaishi Uchiyami. Good, solid wins uh, over Walter Estrada. And uh, I already mentioned the two names he's been in there with. He's also got a good, solid win over Robertson Castellano. Uh, Jonathan Perez. This is a good barometer step up. And overall gauge for Chris Colbert to see where he is at in his career. Uh, Jezreel is from Panama. He's ranked number 20 on box rec. And I believe Colbert is not ranked above him. I believe. Because you know how box rec is. is about points and, and the fights that you've been on. The level of fights. And I'm sure as a world champion, Jezreel's been in bigger fights. But... We'll see where they have the 13-0 Chris Colbert. At, wow. See what I'm saying? Like, respect him, man. And when we see these kids do this, we got to, not even kids, these young adults do this, we got to jump on. It's like 13-0, five KOs. He's ranked number 136, and he's jumping up to the number 20. That's 116 paces, bruh. That ain't a skip. That ain't a fucking hop. That's a leap. Respect this man if he gets through this test, man, and 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 be proud of him and, and proud of yourself if you was able to take a picture with him, you know what I mean? This is a huge step up, huge step up, and this is going to be all skill. I mean, BoxRec says he's got 38, you know, percent punch KO, so like, he's been turning over his power as of late, you know what I'm saying? He's gotten a KO in his last fight and the one before last, but... You know, he's he said not to be a puncher, so he's stepping up in class based on pure skill. Yeah, I think that power, you know what I'm saying, coming about to uh, he's getting older, getting more mature. Now, uh, I think he definitely can go out there and uh, outskill uh, Corrales, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking, man, Chris, man, he might, he, he, he might, you know what I'm saying, with that, that knockout, might want to make a statement, you know what I'm saying, staying in that pocket and uh, – Really putting it on uh, Jezreel, man. He got some good body work, good defense, man. Like he he is a uh, a special special fighter, man. And I I I I hate we don't mention his name more when like when we talk about the uh, the other ones, cause he's gonna be very very good too. But I got Chris, man. I got Chris uh, beating uh, Jezreel. Yeah, man. Uh, interesting to see how this one plays out. Um. 
I'm I, I, I'm I'm really hope, rooting for Chris, man. Hope he hope he's able to pull that off. Uh, he's taking Rene Alvarado. Like, what happened to Rene Alvarado that he's not the WBA interim anymore, or did he get elevated to super? I mean, regular. That Rene is also something, right? I don't know. I don't know. Yo, they no, gave no. it. I mean, they no, giving him right, this title right, shot. Right. Rene beat uh beat yeah, uh Concilio. Yeah, he beat Concilio. I wonder, yeah. I wonder what's gonna see that's that's what I'm saying. Because now you get this interim, won't they take Colbert off the rankings now? Like he won't be number nothing. He'll be off. Just like uh if I go to Welterweight, WBA does not have Ortiz, Virgil. And that's what I'm saying. When you become some sort of champion in it, they just take you smooth out, man. I don't know. I don't know. Shout out to Castillo Clayton, man. He's uh damn, he took that fight on short notice, man. He like 12 days out. He posted today like Steve yo. Steve Rose? He not fighting Steve Rose. They on the oh, same card. They on the same card. Oh, okay. Who who he fighting there? Some Spanish dude. I let touch up for him, okay. Yeah. I bet. Uh we got Joey Spencer, man. He back in action this weekend. In a six round middleweight fight against Eric Spring. Yo, that could have been also. Remember this morning I said Chris Cobra was mad and I thought it was because of the media workout? It could have also been because of that because Joey Spencer was awarded prospect of the year and, and Cobra was in the running with him. And I mean, truthfully speaking, Spencer shit the bed on TV twice, looked gas, yeah. and got touched up heavily. Yeah. And Colbert's look spectacular, so I would be mad too if it was that. So he got PBC. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah, that's that's definitely fucked up. I I I know Joey's a good fighter, but Joey had some adversity last year. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, if you're in the six round, four round fights, you you shouldn't be having that kind of adversity. Joey's still, you know, I'm not saying he's not gonna be good. Just just saying, last year alone, I think when when you look at the PBC prospects, I think Chris Colbert. Had a uh, le legitimate, if not overwhelming, uh, chance to uh, win an award. So they they dropped the ball with that one. Yeah, man. I mean, the thing is that he had four fights in 2019. None of them was any world beaters or or, or, or names. But Joey was like five and zero. Oh. So like the names he was fighting was no better. You know what I'm saying? And 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 if anything. Technically speaking, black and white, Chris Colbert's names were better. He was fighting dudes 29 and 8, 33 and 7. Joey ain't there yet. So, you know, um, I'm mad with him, man. Mad with him. But Go ahead. shout out to Thomas Lamana. Got his way on this card. Lamana's trained by uh, Oscar Rivas. Excuse me. Uh, Raul Rivas. Uh, I say, damn, Oscar out here training motherfuckers too. We got part time. Job. Yo, Oscar actually was in camp with uh, Elderly Alvarez and shit. Oh wow! I mean, you know, Michael Seal a pretty big dude though. I, I was looking at. I mean, at, I don't at, know. I don't know if they sparred. You know that you know. Yeah, he's trained I was with the same at, trainer. And Michael Seals, I'm like, damn, he, he pretty tall for the division. But we'll we'll get to that uh, later on. But Oscar, it's funny so you he, say that because I was looking at that like, damn, this might be a little sleeper. Like, I wonder what's the line because Seals a puncher. I was thinking the same exact thing. But Alvarez is the better boxer and been in a better competition and been international. Seals don't got the amateur background of Alvarez. Yeah, but is that hunger still there for Alvarez? We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Don't forget we got uh, somebody in seven minutes. Seven uh, minutes. Thomas Lama, Lamana versus, man, why they keep doing Jorge like this, bro? I mean, that's the way you do it. We just seen two dudes uh, starch him. So this guy, you know, listen, yo, shout out to Lamana, man. You know, I, I've grown over the years, you know, and um, I've been able to watch him slowly develop without a big promoter, um, with no golden boy, no top ranks. Uh, you know, this dude did it truly on the muscle. Um, he's from Minville, New Jersey, Mike. That's like some... You know what I mean? Uh, uh, Caucasian suburb. You know what I'm saying? He's like chilling, and all of a sudden he wants to be a boxer. Sounds he, like maybe he's got like hella fans from his little school, and he just kept building, building, and building. He suffered one loss to uh, someone you know, um, 
Kersidi's retired that dude. What was his name? Kersidi. God damn, man. Free my nigga Douglas. Douglas. Man. Michael Douglas, right? Free or my dude Kersidi's, baby. The 5'10 Antoine Douglas. The middleweight, man. With the little Kofi on his shit, man. His, his name was Antoine Douglas. So anyway, let's get back on track. For 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 Lamana, this is the perfect name, right? You got a guy who's red hot in Erickson Lubin that stopped him in four. Then you got Jenison Rosario who's gonna be in action on this same card. Win a unanimous 10. Then the big punch in Jamel Charlo at 54 stopped him in three. So you want to come in somewhere in between those guys and make your mark. Obviously, we want you to do it in between one through six because you're getting them after two knockout losses now. Um, but Jorge Corta's only been stopped three times. And as you can see, he's been stopped by decent names. Marco Antonio Rubio, who Anthony Durrell had to take a decision with. And like I said... Uh, Charlo and um, Erickson Lubin. So, Lamana's taking a step up. I know you guys don't believe that, but he's um, he's homegrown. You know what I mean? He's got his own promotional company, him and his dad. He's smart. He sells tickets. Dude, when, when AC was dying, he was still selling tickets in Bally's Casino. Like, he can sell tickets, you know what I mean? And um, he's gotten way better since being with Raul Chino Rivas, the trainer of Tevin Farmer and um, Jason Sosa. So he's training with those dudes. He's training with Tevin. He's training with Steven Ortiz and Jason Sosa and, 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 and um, Raymond Savage and all them dudes, right? So... I'm excited that he got this opportunity. I mean, he hasn't been on TV since his loss. Oh, he lost twice. Damn, he lost to Dusty too. Ah! Fuck. That must have been a nice little dust up though. Um, Cause Dusty from the DMV and you know, uh, my man from deep New Jersey, Minville, Cherry Hill area. So yeah, he lost to Antoine Douglas on Showbox. I ain't get to see that Dusty fight, I don't think. But that was in the 2000 arena. I mean, look, he's racked up a couple wins since then. He got a draw with Bracero. He should have got a, a a win. I watched that fight. Uh, but let's see, man. Let's see what he does. This is a step up for sure, you know. And uh, he needs it. I mean, he's 28 already. He's been, yo, he's been bubbling for, for way too long. You know what I mean? So it's time to let the leash off. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what Chino has been able to do with him over there. And if anything has rubbed off in that Tevin Farmer camp. Yeah, I ain't picking this fight officially, man, but I, 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 I'm I, just tired of seeing my guy, Jorge, you know what I'm saying, take a beat, you know what I'm saying, getting beat up. So I'm 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 pulling for for Jorge Cotto this weekend, you know what I'm saying? He's constantly getting knocked out, but constantly bringing him back and giving him tough opponents. Hopefully he he can shock the world, you know what I'm saying, get a victory, and possibly, you know what I'm saying, put himself into some uh, – a nice place to make some more money, you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, I just don't like seeing guys get recycled and keep on getting knocked out over and over and over again. So hopefully, well, or hey. He's definitely got a better opportunity of getting the win here. Like, there's levels, and uh, no one will ever say Thomas and Charlo and Lubin are on the same level. So that's why I'm saying for Lamana, this is a, a, a gauge right here. Like, bro, you got to do good because we're going to compare you. We're gonna compare you, and 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 all and all and it also could be a beautiful stepping stone because it'll show people like me and others that have been following for at least seven years now that yo he's he's matured and he's learning something. You know what I mean? He's with a good camp, so I wish him the best. I hope that 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 transition with uh, Chino uh, pushes him over. Another dude, damn, it's so crazy. I guess the older I get, it's just gonna be like that. I'm gonna yeah, know everybody. Gonna, yep. Exactly. Oh my Another God, Vito Minelecki, another dude, bro. Like I was, I was just learning how to box when this kid was in the gym, looking like a fucking talent out of this world. Um, and uh, this is another same story. His father's a promoter. His father gets plenty of fighters. You know, his father's not Al Heyman. He can't do, you know, big shows. But his father has had dozens and dozens and dozens of 
show box cards and uh, the Antoine Douglases of the world and the Lamanas and oh my God, so many others. Joshua Grit. So many people have gone through GH3 promotions. Um, and shout out to his father Vito for not making his son kind of be like the flagship shot fighter of his own, you know, house mom and pop promotion, and then instead let him go get that big time exposure with PBC on Fox and Al Heyman. And this is just another one of those, you know, developmental fights for Vito. He's young. I'm talking 17, I think, or something like that. He's young. And the kid's still in high school or just got out of high school. So, and he's a welterweight. So there's no rush. No rush. But believe that. This ain't no little white, regular white boy. Uh, again, his father's Vito Minelecki. They they deal heavy in that um, DMV area. So they know Jabber Heard. He gets that work with Ennis. He gets that work with everybody. Shakur. Uh, Javante, like this kid is no joke. And I mean that in the sense that he'll get in there with anybody. I ain't saying that his skill is on the level of the people that he's getting in with yet. I haven't been privy to see all his uh, sparring sessions. But I, I, I mean, I know my coach speaks highly of him, you know what I mean? And my coach has been with him for a long time. And uh, Shakur's coach or his grandfather speaks highly of him. So, you know, shout out to Vito, man. Um, PBC doing a thing. Got got this dude uh, multiple tele, televised fights. Just like Joey Spencer right out the bat, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, man, definitely, man. I, and I just hope that PBC kind of take the Ryan Garcia route, the the Anthony Yard kind of route, man. Just build this kid up because this kid got a lot of a lot of star potential. You know what I'm saying? We've seen him in the uh, Prudential Center with Shakur Stevenson to help him draw some of that crowd in. And I think uh, Vito, with his fan base, is uh, going to be um, – Somebody that PPC can possibly, you know what I'm saying, build up, you know what I'm saying, and build up. And keep building, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't fall into the fans and say, you know, got to fight somebody. No, I mean, he fights somebody when he gets his title shot. I think he's like the uh, kind of uh, kid, well, not kid, but young man that can make a lot of money early on in the sport of boxing because of his fan base and because of his popularity and because how how active uh, he is on social media. Uh, I'm excited to see him uh, in action this weekend. And uh, one thing that I hope they do, hope y'all listen to me right now, you know what I'm saying? Just keep on doing what y'all been doing. Stream the fights on YouTube, then move it to FS2 or FS1. Then we'll go over to Fox for the main event. But please, please, please let people see all this young talent that you guys have over there. Lastly, but not least, on that card we have rounding out, we have um, Norman Neely, Versus Larry Knight, and the only reason I put these guys on the list because they're heavyweight. So maybe we'll be hearing from uh from uh one of those guys in in, in the near future. Uh, while we get wait on the callers, let me get y'all the show the show box card this weekend. Friday night, Friday night we got a show box card. Uh, Shana John Egershev, he is a um Dimitri Salida promoted fighter. He's facing Adrian. Estrella in a 10 round fight. And also, we got a guy named Vladimir Shinskin. I'm telling you guys right now, I've seen this guy fight more than one time. He is an absolute beast at the super middleweight division. Uh, definitely a guy that you guys are going to want to be uh, watching and be on the lookout for. He punches hard as shit. Uh, got power in both hands, it seemed like. And he really put a beat in on uh, Andre Ware or the guy Ware from. Ohio, last time he was on Showbox, so I was very impressed with him. Also, we got the uh, return of uh, young welterweight prospect Brandon Lee uh, coming off of um, a couple first-round knockouts uh, when his debut on Showtime. He, he He's facing uh, Miguel Zamundia in an eight-round junior welterweight fight, so maybe he's moving down. We'll see, man. We'll see, but I'm excited, man. Good, good weekend of boxing. Way to start the Friday night off, you know what I'm saying? A guy that we seen, Edgar Shell, he, he fought, uh, what's my guy named? Mikael Fox. And we all thought that fight was very, very close. So, back next. Yeah, I'm back, man. Um, Just waiting on Tony to get back at me, man. I called the man, shot him a, a few texts. So, we'll see what's up. And I had checked in with um at 459. Like, we good, champ? He said, yeah. So, I'm like, all right. So we're going to have to wait. This is what I say, show, but this is why sometimes, you know, the show goes through its ups and downs with interviews because I'll be like, it's kind of depressing to, 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 to schedule someone and then not get them. 
She yeah, was wackity whack. But we can go. Who's ahead Norman and, uh, Neely? To, uh, Who's Norman Neely? That last name sounds so familiar. Let me Google. He's a heavyweight. Man, let me tell you what happened to me there. Why you find up uh, this guy's name right? So I'm in a, a market. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to buy me a new monitor. You know what I'm saying? So I could have a, 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 some, some more screens on on my desk. So I find me a monitor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for like forty bucks, not bad. And I meet a guy. You know what I'm saying he's a uh, I guess like a a TV uh, repairman or 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 somebody who buys buy electronics, you know what I'm saying, and restoring, whatever, but he, he's also, he's a boxing fan, and I told him this morning, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I wasn't available to me because I was doing a show, he's like, what kind of sh- uh, show you do, so I sent, sent him the uh, the boxing link, and he sat there and watched, so he told me he watched the, the uh, entire show, he has uh, subscribed to our, uh, our uh, YouTube channel, and uh, uh, he, he, he really uh, is excited to learn more about boxing, so big ups to him. And big ups just out to meet new people, you know what I'm saying? You never know who you're going to meet on a daily basis, you know what I'm saying? So big ups to that guy. Nah, man. It, 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 the show will open up so many doors to meet so many people. I'm telling you, today, bro, I was sparring a pro. And, you know, like, this dude's fought in the Bahamas. You know what I mean? Like, he's got mad fights. Mad losses, though. Journeyman, for sure. You know, he's like 10 and 20-something. You know what I mean? He'll fuck you up doing that motherfucker, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he'll fuck some people up. He fucks, I, I actually did well today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I still haven't decided what level what level I should drop that since 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 I did so well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but hey, man, put about 15 on that. <laughs> hey, hey, for real. Hey, if you're doing it like that, y'all want to see Ness? You know what I'm saying? Hey, this is pay per view, baby. You know what I'm saying? Hey, ain't that with a a professional? Yeah. Hey, nah. man, how old are you, Ness? I'm 40, bro. I, I'm pretty sure, nigga. We, 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 we can find you a a a, a birth certificate that, that say 32. <laughs> Lewis yeah, got somewhere word somewhere, right? Go get some Cuban papers real quick <laughs> yeah, on them. Yeah. Start all <laughs> over on them. Al got to promise me a safe route, though. You know what I'm saying? If he going to build me. Yo, speaking of um, this card, though, ain't Michael Polite on this card, too? He's on a Biloxi card. Oh, damn. I believe he's on Biloxi card. Well, we got him on next week. We got him on next week. Man. And speaking of uh, fights being made, you know what I'm saying? Adding to cards, you know what I'm saying? The Charles Martin and... uh. Joe I Watson seen fight. that. Added to the uh, Wilder, to the Fury, Wilder Fury. Fury, yo, nice and scrap. then and then top rank shit rank shit rank is only putting Navarrete versus a tune up. You see the difference? Do you see the difference? They giving you. They said, "Fuck it, win or lose, y'all both getting this shine." Not this one. This one's like, yo, you gonna win? Only you getting the shine. You know that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I, I was looking at that too. Like, man, just the level. Like, even though like we 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 look at Charles Martin and Joe Watson as being maybe the lower tier level that with division, that's still a very competitive fight, and you guarantee yes. that both guys are gonna throw leather numbers. And both guys, I think Joe Watson and Tank is a little bit worse than Charles Martin. I think well, since Charles Martin being with uh with my guy's name uh, uh Mayweather, Jeff Mayweather, he's been doing a, a lot better. You know what I'm saying? So oh, he with Jeff? He left yeah, he, Manny. Manny, he, he was with Manny? Charles Martin? Charles Martin, yeah. Yeah. I know his last fight, he was, he, he was with Jeff. Because mm. he, he he brought Jeff in for a little bit to uh, show him some things. And I, I, don't, I don't know if, if he's still working with Jeff, but I know uh, for his last fight, yeah, Jeff was there. Interesting. But yeah, man, I, uh, that's a good fight, man. I'm, I, I'm damn excited. Thanks you, Al, Mr. Heyman, for putting on a, a competitive fight. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have a red tail in... Mandatory, what the fuck yeah. is it? Is it a mandatory? That's what they calling it? No. Nah, oh, they probably called the sanction. Like, yo, let us do our mandatory real quick. I don't quick. know who that guy is. Like, bro, you going to put him in there with somebody. I seen like initials like JS, right? Something like that, man. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure it, it's on the notes. Uh, Moving on, man. ESPN card. Uh, Not only ESPN Plus, it's on ESPN, actually. That's, that's shocking. But uh, a leader, Storm Alvarez versus Michael Seals, 10-round fight. Now look, I don't know much about Michael Seals, and I, I've been slacking on doing. My let me let me interrupt. I'm sorry because when you put this on the notes, and you know I got to go find whatever it is that you know we're gonna share that correlates with the subject. There was nothing on Elderly Alvarez and Michael Seals. This fight is more about Felix Verdejo's return and him being with Ishmael Salas. Have you noticed it, or is it just me? It, nah, man. 
type that shit in there. Ishmael Sauce is back one for that. I was like, nigga, what about? I typed in Michael Seals and uh. Yeah, it's about Verdejo. Boy. It's all about Verdejo and Ishmael Salas. It's, and I guess you know why? Because, see, Top Rank is so intelligent. They know. They know if, 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 if somehow they can get Tiafimo to beat Vasil. Oh, my God. What do you think Honduras, Honduras versus fucking Puerto Rico going to be in Madison Square Garden? Him defending them belts against Felix Verdejo in the summer, June, Puerto Rican Day Parade. They not stupid, bro. These dudes is going to milk Verdejo to the end. Man, Michael Sales ain't got no shot, man. He ain't beat nobody. He lost to some guys that I ain't never heard of. Any 37 years old, too? Who the hell is Michael Gabanga? Yo, he, he, of, he was uh, getting at work with um my boy uh uh who oh, man who getting who getting at work uh how do you say uh Calorge, though? From member from the Bronx Tale, how you say his name? Who? Calorgero from, from Bronx Tale. Man, I seen that shit like three or four times. Alright, well hot rod, man. The hot one rod, the one okay. in Fall Mark is uh Brown. Bro, he's twenty one and twenty six, man. He lost to a nigga that was twenty one and twenty six. He, he got DQ. I mean, you never know what happened. He probably hit somebody with a low blow. How many? It could have just he, been. He, it could have been flagrant. Got DQ. I know it could have been flagrant in the eyes man. of that ref, man. And then he lost to Edwin Rodriguez, who which I, I've heard of. Solid fight. Yeah. I mean, look. If you want me to be critical, Edwin is, Edwin is super wide. So and he's Dominican. So you already know how I feel about that. So, you know, if you nice, you would have came down the middle. Like Ward and other nice people. You let, There's still levels you to know? this shit, though. I, I, I'm looking at later. I see Isaac Chalimba. I see John Pascal, Lucian Boutte, Kovalev once. You know what I'm saying? I told you that already, though. I told you. He, he, even, he even got a better amateur background. Seals is all about power. Seals got a little bit of pop, and that's what they selling it as. Don't blink. I just don't know what, what, uh, what a leader is going to come in. The one who's focused or the one... Who came again against Cold Love and just shit the bed? That's the biggest thing. Uh, just with hope leader, it ain't man. the one that's gonna get hit with the right hand. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, fucking! I hate picking. I, I'm going with Alvarez. You know what I'm saying? Just cause he's a favorite. Yeah, you gotta go with the house fighter. Yeah, man. I gotta go with the house fighter. Uh, even though I, I like I like a good underdog, but ain't nothing about Seals' resume or just the buzz around this fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I know ESPN say it's, it's a dangerous fight for a leader, but the if they're it's their card, so they got to make it sound good for their uh, uh, .com. But at the end of the day, man, I think Storm is going uh, to get the, get the job done and possibly uh, match up with Joe Smith Jr. Uh, down the road. And that will be a fight that should be very interesting. A, a technical boxer versus a, a barhouse brawler. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see how that fight plays out. But, yes, yeah, man, sir. return. Return of Felix Verdejo. He's coming off a loss, right? No, no, no. Or, or did he just win? Uh, I could check, man. But, uh, you know, I want to see, you know, I want to see what's up. Because Ishmael Salas is a dude that brings people back. He brought Linares back, and then Linares left him when he got his big fight with Corolla. Uh, I think the first one, right? He didn't really leave him. It was more like... Silas was training Hay, I think, and, and it conflicted with Corolla. And the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he was training. Uh, but he did tell Linares, come to fucking UK and train over here with me. He ain't want to. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. he was training. Uh, so he went back he to like, Freddy, I think, that time, and then he got his ass kicked. I, I, I didn't think it was, it was like the weekend apart, so it could have worked. Yeah, he's coming off a win against Brian Vasquez. Okay, uh, Brian's a decent name. Ain't, that's a... Uh, Dan, that's fucked up. Ain't Brian Vasquez? <laughs> that's my man's wife. That's uh uh the the, the real uh Hannah, Hannah Gabriel. Yup, from Costa yep. Rica. That's yep, her husband. Yep. Yeah, he's uh his biggest win was that um He was a champ at one time though. <laughs> he was. Yeah, he was a champ. He Costa Rican too. He was a champ. Let me see, he had an interim interim. Yeah, WBA. There you go. But did he ever? Like did, oh, they, uh, did he ever get the? Did he ever get the full? He fought for the vacant against Javier. He lost. Javier, Javier, who? Shit, I don't want Javier, nigga. Javier for, uh, for Tony. Uh, Javier from Alabama. 
<laughs> now have your opportunity. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I seen that fight. I seen that fight. That was a tough fight. It was good, yeah, though. You're beating uh, Luke Campbell, too. Like, I can't wait till them bed lines come out. I, I, I want to see them lines. Man, that's sad, though. Javier, you ain't locked this dude out, man. Javier, we got that fake power, man. Man, nah, he got that. Man, Javier, the kind of motherfucker that he ain't going to over He need a trainer, bro. He be out there training himself, bro. You, you, can, you can tell that because he, he the kind of fighter that's going to give you a, a, just enough. If you come with that that, that crazy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to catch you with one, but actually, I ain't going to over it myself. He do got a trainer, actually. I need to not say that. Hector Bermudez is his trainer out of uh, Massachusetts, but I don't know how much Fortuna get out there, man. I, be, I, I, I follow him on Instagram and his shit private, so he don't let everybody follow. He stay in DR. I wonder if my guy going to get drugged over to the UK Who? for the fight. You what, uh, Javier? Yeah. Um, you know what? I can't even act like that. Probably not. Yo, remember his real promoter is Samson Lewickovich. <laughs> you know, oh. Sam Samson ain't never sold nobody up Shit's Creek. He only made Samson. stars. <laughs> I mean, they said don't have big Samson. <laughs> he only made stars, man. I mean, Benavidez is his. Pacquiao was his. Martinez, Sergio was his. Man, he's had some motherfuckers, bro. He brought he brought some talent over here. Damn. Yeah, Fortuna's I always. Just wonder, man. I, I would, damn, man, earthquake over there. Yeah, I just my wish fucking could, dog, big ass butt, about to take my whole desk down. I just wish, uh, man, we could get to the, like, I want to know, like, the inner workings of, like, certain kind of, like, like, I know these these guys came up with different promoters and get passed out. Like, what kind of percentage are these lower tier promoters still getting from these guys? Like, 3.5%? Bro, I like, told you there's a market, man. There's a market, because, like, Think about the dudes in my gym. They ain't got no nationals. They don't even got a national, but they pros, you know what I mean? So they need somebody to get them a fight. They need a King's promotion, sometimes even lower, because King on the real, they've been bubbling the last three years. The motherfuckers producing talent. They, they gave you Jared Hurd. That right there, that's enough to hold off for a few years, you know what I'm saying? Then, now they got a real nice up-and-coming project. They just re-signed. I thought they, was lo I thought they lost them. But they got pop, uh, Michael Polite Coffee again somehow. Um, That's big right there. I know. Man. I thought they was going to lose him. I thought for sure Coffee was going to a big name promoter, especially after seeing Solomon Nikoshi, who he beat. Um, damn, there goes Harrison. Do you think? Yeah, man. That's a good... That's a good steal right there, man. Michael Coffee, man. I love me some Michael Coffee, man. I'm telling you, you guys, when, when, when he busts on the heavyweight scene... I ain't gonna say he's gonna be a world beater or nothing like that, but you guys will appreciate just the uh, the work ethic, the size, and the the punch of power of Michael Polite Coffee. Man, he is a definitely a big, big heavyweight. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who is uh could be a player and come down the line. But yeah, man, uh, you 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 need that push. Every fighter can't can't be a, a gold medalist. Everybody can't win nationals and and be all decorated. So you you need those connections and you need that push. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Oh, uh, we got a special guest on today. Oh uh, man, former WBC uh 154 pound champion Tony Harrison. How's it going today, sir? Hopefully everything's going good with you. Ah uh, man, ah uh, man, come on man, another day above round, and I can handle the rest. Yes, sir, man. Let's go. Well, hey. Got to go and get into it, Tony, man. I hope, hopefully your new year going, it was been great. Your Christmas was great, but, man, take me back to December, what, 2021st, man. You uh, faced a little adversity in that second round, but you got back up. You big down on your, on your gum shield, and you start going to work, man. I'm talking about landing good body shots, landing nice combination, ending with that left to the body numerous times. And then, to me, in my personal opinion, you got a little bit too cocky, man. You started dancing on them. You started flexing on them. Like, what nah, was your mindset? man, that's, com that's comfortable, man. That's okay, comfortable, okay, okay, man. okay, okay, comfortable. 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 They do whatever they want to do. So just, just go through yeah, your mindset. I mean, cocky, at, at, from, from that moment from round where? two to uh, round 11. I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I went in there uh, after the first performance and boxed them good. I wanted to see how that would work. Uh, round one was smooth as ever. Uh, round two, um, it was really nothing different, man. It just uh, for me, it was just my body's first time in a year getting hit with ten ounces of love. So it's just like, man, bam, it hit me. Uh, didn't hurt me or nothing. I was a little off balance and shit. So um, it hit me a little bit. 
And um, it just woke me up. I started shaking my head like, okay, it's back. It's back. You know, it's time. I'm back. Um, the round ended, and um, I go to my corner, and I, I, I say to them, I say, like, why the fuck are we boxing him? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, we beat him once. We know how. We know his strength. We know he's not that strong. We know he's not that physical. We know he can't fight better than us. He can't box better than us. You know, and my, and my, and my, and, and you know, winning the title for me, boxing the way I did, you know, uh, you know, it was, it, was, I was slayed for, it. I was slandered for, it, you know, probably by you guys too, all the whole motherfuckers that don't know about the sport. Uh, so you know, I was kind of slandered for, it, but for me, it was like, you know, um. It was, it was it, like I, I didn't have to fight with uh, a band aid no more. I didn't have to fight with uh, trying to win desperately or badly or you know you know winning and losing this part of the sport. And I told myself, man, look, you got the monkey off your back. You got to pass round nine and win the championship. So my, my the monkey was just off my back, man. I'm like, you know, you always gonna be a world champion. Go back to gambling. Let's gamble. Let's let's go. Let's let's. You know, I did the whole press conference. I told him I was going to push it to him. I, I'm, I'm going to stand there and I'm going to fight. And I, you know, and I, and I meant it. So, you know, it, it was, it was no skill involved. It was just fight with your nuts. And um, I just fought with my nuts, man. And uh, I let him, I let him hang. Man, I was, I, I, I felt great though, man. I felt amazing, man. I felt, uh, I felt good. And, and, and like I said, everybody can talk about, you know, you gamble, I mean, you got a little cocky and all that, but. Truth be told, I didn't get knocked down when I was being cocky. I didn't get knocked down when I was dancing. I didn't. Looks like we lost him. I'll get him right back. Oh, no problem, man. Yeah, man. All right. Maybe cocky was the wrong word. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I, I ain't mean it like that. But in, in my mindset, it's just like you got a little bit complacent with the uh, dance. Like, bro, like, I, I, I ain't going to sit here in front. Like, people heard me on the show. I picked Tony Harrison. I asked my, all my homeboys in, in, in my group chat. I lost about a hundred some dollars to these, you know what I'm saying, to these guys because I wrote, wrote with my dog. And, and that don't mean shit, but. Uh, not saying that, that maybe like, all right, we uh, got him back, Mike. Tony, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, all right, just just picking up uh, uh, where you left off. Take me back to the press conference. How much of that was just for the build up, and how much of that was like really personal? And do you think you guys could ever bury the hatchet? Uh, like for me, it was just uh, none, none of it. Like for me, it's nothing. Nothing can be fake. Like, like I said, um, for us, it's not. It's not pay per view. We don't get. We don't get more money. The more you know, the more pay per view buys we get. It was on free TV. It was nothing to hype up. I literally, genuinely, just doesn't. I don't like the guy. You know, he genuinely probably don't like me. Um, so it was just two guys that really just don't like each other, man. I, you know, it was. Um, but for me. The way everything played out, the way he was getting frustrated with everything, I, it it was fun. That was fun for me. And I think uh, uh, I think it's no better combination of two guys fighting than me and him. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, me being from where I'm from and me having to get for Gab and me talking my shit the way I talk my shit in Troy style. I think it was just like it was just a perfect. It was a perfect marriage, man. It was like a perfect marriage. Uh, but I genuinely don't like him. He genuinely don't like me, but. To be honest, I don't think he can go. I, it's, it's not. He's not a dude I probably would ever like. So, uh, uh, I think. I think. I, I think it come a, a situation where, for us, that we be, like that we can become cordial. We speak when we see each other, and this, you know. And I think that I think we call it. it. No. Do you think Charlo? I'm let me sorry, let me jump in. Uh, all right, Mr. Harrison, we have one coming from uh, Teddy. In the Midwest, that says, being from Cleveland, I've all, I'm always happy to see a Midwest fighter get love. Would you be open to a Willie Nelson rematch or a potential fight with Erickson Lubin? Uh, Willie Nelson, I think, is out the picture. I think uh, Willie Nelson, he's he's on Twitter begging, and, and, and you know he's probably working like a regular nine to five. He probably you know he ain't fought in, in years, so. He's just a guy that's begging on the opportunity to make some money. So he he's out the question. Even though I, you know, uh, years ago I, I begged for that fight. I begged for, you know, I begged for it. And when I begged for it, you know, through promoters, um, nothing ever came from it. So 
now that I'm in the position I'm in, you know, I, I, it's old, he old news, man. He old news. And, it, you know, to be honest with me, man, I just tell myself, like, damn, the three losses you got, you was beating all these guys. You know what I mean? So it ain't, it ain't your talent. Something else. What the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, for me, man, I'm just, I'm just on the bigger and better things, man. I, I, I would love, um, for me, I don't know if I'd be taking a step back fight, Lubin. For me, I, you know, for me, I, I, I would love to, 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 uh, like I said, my top, top of my list is, if I had the three, three ways, top of my list is, is Charlo three. Um, unification, whoever wins this fight, uh, if I, if, if they just looking for somebody to fight, I get to fight for unification or somebody like Laura. That probably like, that probably be like my top three. Now, now you say uh, you was winning all three fights, and, and you and you were, but you said like, what is it? You know what I'm saying? Have you came across like, uh, have you found what it is that is preventing you from getting these victories? Because we seen you in there against her winning that fight, against Charlo winning that fight, against Nelson winning that fight. So what what is it? I don't know, man. I'm freaking out. I feel like I'm getting for me. I just feel like I'm getting better, man. Every every. Every time I'm getting better and I'm finding a new part of myself. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I took off for a year and, and fought the guy they think is the most dangerous guy in the division, who's the most strongest in the division, and I walked him down for 11 rounds, man, and, and was comfortable, man. Like I, I belong, I belong there. I, you know, I kissed, I, I kissed him, I hugged him. It was just so sweet, like it was just a sweet thing. It was just like you know what I mean. I just got lax for one minute, for one second. You know what I mean? And it wasn't even me getting last because um, he threw a hook, I threw a hook. You know what I mean? He was just a little short, and I just didn't see it. So it wasn't even me getting last. It wasn't like he got, I got hit with my hand down or anything like that. Like, I threw the hook. My right hand was, was, was I, I had it on. I was talking on the phone. So, you know, the technique was there. Every, everything was there, man. Just, uh, it, was a, it was a shot. You know, it was just a shot. He, and then um, for him to knock me down, I get up, he knocked me down again, I get up again. Like, it just showed, you know what I mean, like, tremendous heart. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it ain't got nothing to do with not having it. You know, everybody like, oh, you don't got a 10, but come on, man. I got it three times, you know what I'm saying, when somebody knocked me down. And I would have kept going. Actually, the last time when the ref stopped it, I actually was getting my wits back. So I actually was, I actually felt better than I did the first time he knocked me down. The second time was just like, oh, my wits was still done from the first time. And the third time, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm I'm, I'm I'm my my health bar is like at eighty now. You know what I mean? He stopped it. And you, you can see the strength I when when I resisted Jack Reese. Like no, don't stop it. But I understand it. You know, as, as, as the sport, I understand his judgment as as a ref. So it's, it's it's kudos to it. But um, I don't know, man. I can't pinpoint it right now, man. I can't I can't pinpoint it. I think uh, I think I'm. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm too comfortable with the sport or, or what. And, you know, maybe I got to find something that gets me just a little more discipline in those rounds. I need, you know, my discipline actions, but I was comfortable. All right. We got another one coming from Dominic in Seattle, Washington, that wants to know, what's your top five music artists when you head into the big fight? One love, champ. Uh, let me see. We got, I mean, everybody probably be from Detroit because they know, they know my kind of lingo. So it'll probably be like, uh, it'll probably be like E-Way, 4-2 Doug, Sada. Um, some, I'm, I'm going to throw my man Rick Ross, nigga. I listen to some Rick Ross. And, um, I would say uh, I'll probably say some uh, some babyface Ray or some Bezo. Do you think uh, the love you got after the loss is the same as the love you got after you uh, won the WBC belt? Man, it's not even it's not even close. It's not even close. Like I said, um. Uh, winning the title made me second guess my ability almost. Like people slandered me for the way I fought and slandered me for the for the perfection of the 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 art of boxing. You know what I mean? And um, they're like, oh, you didn't win, you didn't win, you didn't win. 
And um, it just made me change my way. Like, well, like, I already knew I had dog in me. Everybody around me know I got dog. Everybody know that's how I spar. That's how I just fought. That's how I spar. You know, I walk everybody down. I pinpoint actually. I, I, I dominate them. I take their will from them. That's how I spar. So uh, it was just time for me to release it to the world, man, but, because I was just so sick of him thinking that he was just that, 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 that dog. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, I, I can't remember the last time we seen Charlo move the way he did, you know, going backwards. You know, he he went back to Ronnie Shields days, man. He, he was boxing. He was boxing good. And I'm, I'm not even knocking anybody. He boxed pretty damn good. But I can't remember the last time we seen him box like that since he's been with Derrick James. And I made him use every inch of that ring, um, that fight. Do you, I'm sorry about that. Do you think that the, uh, the fix was kind of, I don't want to say fix, but looking at the scorecards after uh, that fight, I had you winning the fight comfortably, you know what I'm even with the knockdown before the 11 round knockdown. But the scorecards indicated that they had Jamal, I mean, Jamel up going into the 11 round. What's your take on those uh, judges and, and those scorecards? I couldn't win, man. I, I think, um, I th- well, like I said, I, already, I was going into the, to the fight, knowing how how stacked the the, the the deck was, the deck was already stacked for me. Uh, uh, like I said, he he's the more popular fighter. It was you know Lions only promotions. He 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 lives damn near in California, or got a house out there or something like that. So it was our it was already stacked against me. But none of that played a part. I think what played a part is it was the same way with E.C. Smith when he fought Julian Williams. The moment he got the complaining and talking about how the judges robbed him and stuff like that, I think that played a part in how these judges scored the fight. Um, so, but uh, I, I, I don't see how. Like, I watched it, like, five times. I'm like, how? Do they have this guy win any round but round two? Maybe round, like, eight or something like that. Yeah, a round, round eight, I like I took off, like, round, round nine or something like that. It was, Maybe like around eight or something like that, but around two and around eight. But other than that, yeah, I'm like, how do they got this guy winning? Like, you know what I mean? So it just let me know like the deck was just stacked against me, man. Like, it was, like I couldn't win. So for me, my trophy was just for me. The only trophy I wanted and needed was the respect part of it, and I feel like I earned it. I earned that. You know what I mean? Like no, no, nothing, nothing. All this stuff that that, that, I, that I've got, nothing. I've always I earned it. I earned it all. Nobody ever gave me nothing. So, so that was my thing for him. Is just that fight. Is just you know, don't care. But you won the belt. You know what I mean? Nobody can take away from you being a champion. You know what I mean? Go, go earn the respect now. Not only from him, but from the fans, from the people. And um, it was it was an awesome night, man. It was an awesome night. I, I it didn't go as planned for me. Um, because when win, lose, or draw, I I just wanted to be. I wanted to go to the scorecard. And even if he would have won, he would have got the badge that I got when I won the title. He would have got they would have badge. He probably would they probably would have been on his his Instagram and his Facebook and his Twitter bashing like I got badge. So that that was uh, you know that that was that that's, that that was that would have been my victory for me was to just go to the end and, and, and show him after a year. I got like I spoke into them press conferences. I'm just the, I'm the better athlete and I and I showed it. You know what I mean? I just got you know got caught with a shot. That's all. Tony, we got another one coming from Brandon in Cincinnati that says, have you ever considered joining the snack program? I think it would help with your conditioning. Or another good suggestion, maybe training in Colorado. Any thoughts? Uh, and, that's, and that's the crazy part, my guy. Uh, the moment I won the title, I actually trained in Colorado. That's, and that's crazy. That's crazy you said that. I don't, I, you know. I don't think snack is, is, is you know, even, even though those things, I think, I think are, are little, little small details of being an athlete, the small, small things, small detail things that, that an athlete needs. Um, I felt like uh, my condition was great. I felt like everything was, was perfect, man. I think, uh, I felt like everything was perfect. But like I said, when I won the title, I went out there to train in Colorado, right? Colorado Springs, I ran the same that everybody be running like I was right out there in, in the mix of it so you know that's a good thing that's a good thing you said that man but probably I should have just 
take it out there again for the second fight. For sure. But you chose to go to Florida, man, to Keith Thurman's gym, training the sand in the heat. Uh, do you think that that worked or you, you wouldn't return to Florida? Man, listen to me. I would I wouldn't probably wouldn't return nowhere else to train in Florida. You know what I mean? Like Florida was it was like man, I'm talking about like when I say that gym, I see how Keith Thurman make weight. I see how you know how like it's 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 everything about that gym is real life boxing gym. You know, from the smell to the to the walls to the bags to the it's it's you know it's it's the it's the mecca of of, a, of how a boxing gym should look, how, how it should feel, how it should smell. Nothing is cute or commercial about it. Like I don't think I would, I don't think I would I would have a fight. I don't think I would have a training camp nowhere else but Florida. All right, we got another one from Cut West in the in Georgia says, "Do you regret showboating in your last fight?" Um, nah, I probably should have did it more to be honest. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I probably, I probably just did it more. I, I, like I said, the showboating, showboating, they just show, it showed how comfortable I was in the in the championship fight. Not only how comfortable I was, but how comfortable I was fighting that guy that I fought. All right, we got another one in Chicago from Steve, who says, "Who would you like your next opponent to be?" Charlo. That, that was that simple. I, 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 to be honest, this is my honest to God truth. I would give my whole checkup to fight him again, just for the glory of fighting him again, because it's one one. I think, um, I think not only the the promotion and press conference, like everything leading up to the fight was just how a, how a fight's supposed to be presented, you know, with two guys like that. Everything, everything was just lined up perfect, man. I would give my whole my whole check, not a dollar. To fight him again. Now, nah, you, you take, donate the whole check to whatever you got to donate. I'll take my whole check and donate it just to fight him again. Nah, nah, nah. We ain't doing all that. We don't fight for free. Keep that check. Do you think the third one is worthy of pay per view? Because I, I'm looking at some rumors, you know, in San Leo, Santa Cruz, and Javante Davis. I'm looking at Tony Harrison and Jamal Chello 3. A little bit better fight for, for my money than the other one. You feel me? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I agree with you, man. To be honest, for me, man, I like. Like, I don't handle none of that, man. I'm from Detroit, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, we, 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 we got antennas on our TVs when I was coming up. So, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't, I ain't, I don't, I ain't even, I don't, I, I don't even be thinking about, you know, where I fight or how I fight or what, what station, what network. My whole thing just be the person I'm fighting. Like, I want to fight him. Like, I, like, I just love, I, I love, I love everything about it, man. I'm telling you, I love everything about you know the the heated, you know the heated conferences, the his his family and my people, you know arguing in the stands. Like it just it just was a it was a it was it was a matchup from heaven. All right, we got another one from Christopher Riley that says, "If you can't secure that Charlo rematch, would you be open to facing Terrell Gache?" Um. To be honest, I think uh, that would be a good fight. I think uh, me and Terrell would be a good fight. I think uh, uh, if I can't get a Charlo rematch, I, I, I would love to fight my next fight. I, I feel like I earned it. I feel like I earned my next fight. To fight. Hold on. Hold on. I feel like I earned my next fight to fight in, in Detroit. And I think uh, I think that's a good candidate because Cle Cleveland will, 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 will come support their guys and I'm right in Detroit. It'll be a it'll be a Midwest uh uh play now. All right, we got another one from Iron Sal in California. Actually, it's uh what is it Bakersfield, California. First off, I thought you were winning. He says, first off, I thought you were winning the fight before all the knockdowns. Do you feel moving down to 147 is an option? I've always liked watching your fights since the showbox days. Uh oh, man, if I could make one forty seven I probably would have made it four years ago. Uh you know, uh my whole life, man, since I was sixteen years old I've been fighting at one fifty two, so uh my my, my metabolism is, is kinda slowing down like it ain't like it used to be. 
Um, so I think by right now it's just about putting everything in in, in my body how that needs to be put in there and, and just kind of doing everything right. I feel like right now in boxing, I, I'm in the 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 Tom Brady era, the LeBron James era, where everything has to be done right. Like everything you put in your body, yo, all the water, all the training, everything, all the sleep, everything got to be done right for me to even make 54. All right, we got Fresh the Don in your city, your state, Detroit. He says, you did the city proud, my guy. I still got much love for you. My question is, when are we going to see you fight back home? The city been waiting on that. I think you and Clarissa would sell out Little Caesar. No, sell out. No, sell Little Caesar out. Excuse me. Um, You know what, man? I think, I, like I said, uh, I think uh, if I can't get the Charlo 3 rematch, I'll fight him anyway. I'll fight him in Houston, if, you know, if, if needed be. Um, so, but if I can't get that, I feel like I earn my right. I feel like I earn my, I, I put in my, I put in my groundwork. I earn my right. You know, every world champion is, uh, every world champion is fighting at home. Um, you know, you got Julian fighting at home. You got her fight at home. And I feel like I just put in my just dues to just fight at home, man. So that would be my next, that would be my next step, man. That's my next step. But like, if I can't get that Charlo fight, I'm looking to fight at home. Do you think Charlo has any interest in fighting you again? Uh, no. To be honest, man, I think his his answer, like when I say, man, like and this is my honest guy too. The, the, the answer for how the fight played out, the the end, it was like uh, it, it was like those guys when when the fight ended. You know, the guy, them guys took a breath like, whoo, man, I'm glad it ended, you know, because they knew they were down, you know what I mean? So they they, they were glad, man, and his answer um, after the fight, it just let me know, like, yeah, he ain't really that interested in doing that again. You know, uh, I think uh, whoever fights him next, I feel like I showed him the way. Like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, um, I feel like um, everybody I fought, I feel like take the game plans away from me. I feel like Julian used a lot of what I did to be heard. And I feel like everybody can use a lot of what I did to just be Charlo. I think it's not that hard. We got another one from Jason who says, What's up, champ? Props on displaying the sweet science. Love the way you scrap. What do you think you could have done differently in that 11th round against Charlo to get that round and even finish the fight? I had it very close to even fight up until that point. Only asking because your other two losses came at the later half of your fights. What was the question again, though? He basically want to know what you think you could have done lit differently in that eleventh round to get the win. Um, way before the eleventh round, I just feel like if I just would have pushed it tenfold, because once the, the moment I got him going back, it was like, oh, he worried. You know what I mean? He knew he couldn't break me. And if I just would have pushed that times three, I wish I should have did it, man. But I felt like I let him escape a lot of the times when I was supposed to make him fight, engage and fight. I let him escape and move left and move right and 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 and, ex and escape, man. But I, I just, damn, it was right there for me. I feel like it was right there for me. So I feel like I just should have pushed it a little more from round three to round eleven. How many times have you replayed that that scenario back in your head? Like, damn, man, if I would just did this or just did that, I would have been straight. Oh man, that's life for you, man. That, that's that's every that's yeah, every day. Man, I wake up and be like, damn. If I just would have just, if I just would have played this lottery this time, you know what I mean? Like that's just life for you, man. But damn, if you miss something, man, you know that you're supposed to. You miss something, you know you're supposed to have gotten. It's just like that. So it's, it's for me, it's just, I you know, I'm there. I'm there, man. I just feel like I just gotta cross my T's and dot my eyes and, and keep everything right now. It's just a little more detail. All right, we got another one coming from Arthur A. He says, no question, just great performance. Keep your head up. Keep grinding. 
all you'll be a two and no and you'll be a two-time champ uh so just uh showing you some love uh we got another one from rel in new mexico that says uh tony your last fight was good you got knocked down in the second round and won every round up until the second stoppage do you think charlo reclaimed the title because of your time off and if so are you ready for the herd rematch to get your green strap back thanks champ uh 313 hashtag mlk boulevard um i think uh me taking that year off had everything to do with me losing the fight i had nothing to do with him but just everything to do with me um he got a fight in between i, w I wasn't able to get one in between uh when i asked for one in between they told me no so i mean just like any sport man i think any sport you playing like no like, LeBron James can't take off a year and think he's going to get back in there and play at game speed or his body's going to feel the same, you know, taking that year off. So I just think the more consistent you are with whatever sport you're doing, the better you're going to be. And I just took a year off. So I just think um, the first time I got hit in the second round, and it's not even like the punches – was that hard, but my body was telling me, like, what the fuck are you getting hit with? A sludge hammer or something? But it wasn't even like the punches were that hard. It just was my body wasn't used to getting hit no more. It wasn't used to, to getting punched in the body, punched in the head. You know what I mean? When you take a year off, that that's what it does to you. So I think me taking that year off had everything to do with me getting knocked down twice or, you know, knocked down the second round and knocked down in the eleven. It's funny you say that, cause I'm just like just, just looking back in time. Like, damn, even the great Michael Jordan, when, when he took that time off and, and tried to come back, he ain't make it back that first year. But damn, should believe when he got his time and got his feet under him, he was that bad man again. So yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. And, and that's and, that, and that's and that's and that's when that's in any sport, man. Any sport is on site, on, on site, on hand. You know what I mean? Like you can't just take off a year and try to compete back at the top level. Like, that was the top level. Like, that was the top of the top. You know what I mean? Like, that was the top of the top level. This wasn't me going in against nobody that's, like, you know, mid-bar. I went in and, and fought the top of the top for taking off a year, man. And my body just was, my mind and my heart was telling me, like, oh, you ready? It's time. Once my body got hit, though, my body started telling me, like, how long has it been since you got hit with something like that? You know what I mean? In my, to my, my body felt the worst that it's ever felt in life. Like, I went to my hotel room and slept. I couldn't do nothing, couldn't talk to people. I slept. My head was banging. My my hips was aching. My ribs was aching. My, I'm talking about it was like, yeah, I, felt, I felt like death. I felt like I got hit with a bunch of baseball bats. You know what I mean? It's just my body just telling me, like, hey, don't take this much time off no more. All right, champ. We got another one coming from Super Blue. Says, after the Charlo fight, which I had you leading, how was the reception that you received when you returned to Detroit? Um, I think Detroit is probably the hardest city to make it in in anything you're doing. Uh, when you when you, when you make it, they are, they're behind you. When you when you fail, they they don't they act like you know you want shit. So. You know, I, I stay in my own little bubble when it comes to coming to this city. I love it. But I just stay in my own little bubble, man. I don't really go out much. I, you know, everybody I be around be family. So it's all love whether whether I fight again or I do or I win or I lose. You know, it's all love. All right, we got another one coming from Mad Bent. Says, Tony, I'm a fan for life. You show dimensions that can't be thought of. The mediator became a bull. Is training in your future? I guess training to be a, like a, a you know a coach. I know you deal with the amateurs a lot. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still doing. It. I, I'm at the gym right now. To be honest, man. I, I, all our now, most of our amateurs just walked out. Probably got like three in here left. Um, that's what I do, man. I, I enjoy it, man. But the more I'm in the sport, I understand that the risk versus reward. And my son is in here every day. You know, I I, I, I would leave my son to any other sport because. Um, you just got to be politically correct to be in this sport, man. And um, the risk versus reward, it takes a ton of a ton of 
politically correct individuals to get you to the money that's near that needs to be made in, in any other sport. So I, you know, I'll probably tell any other any, any of these kids, you know, learn how to fight, learn how to fight. But you know, maybe this not may not be something that you choose as a career unless you're just special. You said unless you're just special. Yeah, that's you special. Yeah. Now you don't think that your son, being the son of a fighter, obviously you being with Al Heyman, you've already gone through the trials and tribulations that you'll be able to navigate his career better than your own. I would. I, th- I honestly think I would. That's that's the crazy part. I honestly think I would. But at, at what expense and how many years? You know what I mean? Like, like time is the only thing of value at that point. You know how many years would it take? For us to to break down, uh, kick down the wall, to get him where he needs to get. I don't care how talented he is. It's it's it's, it's a ton of talent out here in this world, man, that we never see ever because they can't find a way to kick that door down. So it's it's, it's it becomes a thing that I'm playing with time. And my son is on a treadmill running a mile right now. He's three years old. He's jump open like he's ten. You know what I mean? So he's already like. You know he's already like born in in a, in a sports blood. You know what I mean. So he can do anything, man. So my my thing would be, would it be boxing? You know, would it be boxing? I think my son could be special in boxing, but would it be boxing? You know what I mean? Like, um, a lot of times, a lot of nights after the fights, man. Like, I don't think I want him feeling how I felt. You know what I mean? Just to make, you know. What I feel like is minimum wage compared to what basketball, football players, and and baseball players are making at the highest level. This is the highest level of boxing, and I feel like we're making like you know, okay, it's it's good money. Trust me, it's good money, but it's minimum wage compared to all the other sports. All right, we got another one coming from Alvaro who says, "Great fight, champ. I hope you get the third fight next." I'm glad to see you willing to change things up and go to Florida. How much of your success in the last fight would you attribute to leaving your comfort zone at home? I mean, I I, I think that I think that was everything. I think that was everything, man. And um, just seeing something new, man, getting getting around new surroundings, and like I think it was it was everything. Not only for me, I just think it gave us all time to focus on the task at hand. Like nobody was going home to their to their families. Uh everybody did their homework. Um my brother was 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 up all night, you know, putting our plans together and he had time to do it. He didn't have to, you know, put nobody to bed and take kids to school. So our main focus was to win, you know, to win a fight. And I think everybody was locked in to do that. All right, we got another one coming from uh, Mr. Sims that says, Champ, you gave us a phenomenal fight. It was definitely a candidate for fight of the year. I would love to see you get that WBO belt from Patrick Texeria and come back with the unification fight. We were actually supposed to have, supposed to have Patrick today, but we still got you. <laughs> we'll talk to him another time and see what he thinks about fighting you. But what do you think about that question, Champ? I actually thought he put I, my first time actually seeing him fight, and um, my first time seeing the other guy fight too. But my people have been telling me that the other guy was like a beast, and um, the way uh, Patrick fought, I'm like, this guy is nice. He, this guy's awkwardly nice. Like he's awkwardly moving his feet, he awkwardly make his face, he throws punches in slightly different angles. But what I seen the whole time, like this guy's determined. Like I saw, I saw, saw it. Like I saw it, and like this guy's determined to win the fight, and he did, man. So I say kudos to him. Will I ever fight him? I doubt it. Will Julian Charlo? Will anybody ever fight him? I doubt it. But I thought he put on a hell of a, a performance against against somebody he was a, a eight to one underdog on. Do you think uh, Terrence Crawford can come up and uh, beat Patrick Texteria? There's been a rumor that's been floating around that Golden Boy sent him uh, over a offer. Mm. I love Terrence Crawford, man, but I think it becomes harder when he's fighting somebody that's six. However tall Patrick was, he looked like he was about six three, 
on the TV screen. I don't know how tall he is, but I think he becomes. I think it just becomes a different element when when you fight somebody that's six three and I only got one loss. You know what I mean? Like that guy knows how to win too. So I, I think um, I, I don't think Terrence. If he wins, it's it's going to be it's going to be a very good fight. Hey Tony, uh, what's up with the rankings, bro? Like, how you get in a championship fight and you no longer top fifteen in the WBC? What the hell is going on? Nah, man, that's that's the way stuff. That's where life go, man. I, like I said, man, I, I I got to a point where they didn't want me there anyway. I just kicked the door down, man, and told everybody to lay down. You know what I'm saying? Don't move, don't move. But wait, I mean, but 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 to, but to look, be look. clear, you you are paying sanctioning fees, right? I pay them, yeah. I mean, you need to call uh, Mauricio. There's no way you could be champion your last fight and drop out the top 15. Yeah, no, that ain't right. I mean, but look, I, I like, I, like this is the thing. Like, I've never communicated with none of this, none of these guys. You yeah. know what I mean? So it just let me know how I like, like how I earned it. Like I've never communicated with Mauricio before. I earned it, man. I earned it. Like I fought everybody that asked me to fight, and I earned it. I don't, I don't, none, I don't know, no, I don't know none of the guys from sanctioning bodies. I know the people that work for for Mauricio, who are great people, but I don't, I don't, I've never talked to Mauricio. Yeah, well, somebody need to contact. So it's not even. You, it's you, not even. It's like you said, yeah. you earned it. You earned it, not, it, so you don't deserve yeah. to not be top fifteen. Like that means you don't get a shot again by not being there. Why would they? Th Only way if, if if the champ picks you again, like. That's crazy that uh, you get a win. I, I don't know. I'm going yeah, to have man, to interview that's, Mauricio that's, that's, myself. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, you do that, man, because I you know, I, I don't understand it either, man. But That's insane. Hey, man, like I said, I'm, I'm from Detroit. My back, my back always been against the wall. So, hey, I get the opportunity. I'm going to take it again. Do you think it's going to be hard for you to, to, to get a fight seeing as how – I mean, like, let me real recognize real. Like, people know how well you was doing in that fight against Jamel uh, last time. So, do you think people are going to be, like, hesitant, hesitant to, like, fight you now, seeing uh, the performance you put on? Mm. I would say I'm a guy that up and coming, the up and, the up and coming prospects would, would love to fight um, to, to, to see, to, to gauge where they're at. I'm a guy that Top level talent will probably stay away from because I'm too much of a of a risk, and um, I think that's it. I would love to fight Brian Costello though, and he ranked number four. This is what I'm saying. How he ranked number four? He had a draw with Laura. Okay, Laura will fight Laura. Okay, <laughs> like I don't even understand. Mm -hmm. I, man, we mm -hmm. got to get Mauricio back on here. All um, these guys, man. All these guys, man. All these guys, man. The they 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 got good people behind them, man. Paying paying and sanctioning the bodies what needs to be paid, man, and, and talking to the right people. I, I'm Tony Harrison speaks for Tony Harrison, man. I, that's the honest guy truth. I speak for myself, man. Nobody else speaks for me, bro. But but listen, that's, that's just, but you know, you know, you know, you could get yourself a guy like uh, a Keith Conley, who's your manager, and then Al Still is your advisor. Like you could get someone because think about it, right? Keith Conley does business for. Daniel Jacobs. Look at all the great things that have happened for Jacobs. First, he was the last dude to get the the, the, the last HBO six fight deal. Then he was the the first dude to get the Canelo big twelve million dollar payday. And now he got a fucking Chavez comeback in Arizona. Like you know what I mean? You need a manager. And you keep out, but you need somebody working them rankings. Cause again, Keith Conley did. Uh, he just got uh, mm -hmm. Adam Kornacki, an eliminator in the IBF at a heavyweight title shot. You know what I mean? So yeah, you got you get somebody got to be making yeah, the phone I, I, calls. That's, I, yeah, that, like, that's what I'm telling you though. Everything is politically correct. I've, I've, I've been. I came in the game by myself. I fought and got the 18 no and got the Al Heyman by myself. Yeah, uh, and the people that was just around me, but you know, other than that, man, like you, you naming these guys, I've never even heard of. Wow. And but my thing is, I'm I'm not even out here trying to hear from though. I'm just a guy that's betting on him. I'm betting on me and let my skills do the work, and and I got to where I got.
For sure. Do you think uh, your your uh, professional career will, will end with PBC, or can you see yourself like possibly going to like seeing what the Zone or ESPN has to offer? Um, I you know I don't know, man. That's a, that's a tough answer, man, because. Everything about me is loyal. Everything about me is 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 loyal. You know, comes with loyalty and 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 and, and showing the love to people that show love to me. So, um, but at the end of the day, I'm still a I'm still an athlete in the sport of boxing that wants the best fights possible and, and the biggest money fights possible. So, uh, I think if DAZN was to offer something that made tons of sense for me um, financially and the right person, like a Kell Brook, I would love to fight a Kell Brook. You know what I mean? So. If it makes sense, you know, I, I'm I'll, I'll, I'll drop up a dime, I would do it. All right, we got another one from Israel Webb. I believe he's in uh, Kansas. He says, uh, were you surprised as the rest of us when the judges showed Charlo ahead in that fight? Great fight nonetheless, Tony. Ready for number three. Yeah, he already answered uh, Yeah, like, like I said, man, um, yeah, like I said, uh, the, the, I was, the, 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 the deck was already stacked, man. So uh, we just went in with with with, with the mentality of dog and the dog, man, and proving to the people um, how many flaws the guy had and how much of a dog we were. So I think um, us getting our respect, and that that was the whole thing. Respect, getting, getting me just getting my respect, man. I won. So you know that was that's for man to man. It was just it was just two men fighting each other, and for man to man, it was just to respect and I got it we got another one in California Info Joe says what up champ you gained the fan in LA even though you didn't win it was a good performance hold your head up you'll bounce back bro what do you think about a comeback fight against Laura um, on the PB side on the PBC side I think that's one of the only fights that kind of makes sense for me um, he's one of the guys that's been on top of the sport for a long time. Um, you got a uh, child that just fought, so he he's exed out, and that's just a third one. You got Julian who's fighting. Um, so really, it's really not too many guys that make sense for me to fight. You know what I mean? It's, I'm not going back to fighting for uh, you know, penny ten of dollars to try to get back up in WBC rankings, right? You know what I mean? The belts don't really too much matter. I want I want the meaningful fights for the fans. And um the most exciting fights, that's all. All right. I got a uh, question for you and uh when I ask the question, man, I, I don't mean it by no disrespect at all. But how how strict was uh Vada okay. testing uh, uh for this fight and how many times were you tested uh before the fight? Um I think Vada does a good job, man. Um, I think they, 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 like I said, for me, they did a great job, man. They, they, they popped up on me. I never knew when they was coming. They tested randomly all the time. So I think, um, Vada is something that every, every top level fight should, should use because it, it just, it, it evens the playing fields and makes sure everybody's on the same page. Are you surprised when you, when you see, Top level fights, not using it. it. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. You know, ever since Vada started get, started testing and, and find out all the all the people dying and finding out who's you know dropping dirty in in, in big fights. It's crazy to me, man. It's crazy to me. You know, I've always been a guy that never took nothing. So it'd be crazy to me. You know, if I got the opportunity to to to, to have something like Vada. And I don't have to pay for it. It, it, it. it goes without saying. You know, athlete versus athlete made the best one in me. Win. Absolutely. Uh, we got another one from Jemmy in Delaware that says, I just want you to know you were the one that sold the Jamel fight. You were the reason I tuned in. The shit talking was A+. Plus. Fire. <laughs> Let's go, Harrison. We want a trilogy. So no question. Man, just so do I. And um, 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, so do I, man. And um, I think a lot of his answers are saying he's chasing legacy. But for me, I just think it's nothing more legacy-defying than Vernon Forrest fighting Sugar Shane Mosley three times or Pacquiao Marquez keep fighting each other because that's how much excitement they brought to the fans. You know what I mean? That, that's legacy, man. We, we bring that much excitement to the fans, man, and they want to see you fight, fight that person over and over and over again. So nothing, nothing I want more than to fight him again. But back to my guy first point, man, that, that build up, bro, like the shit talking was epic, bro. Like I was finding myself getting mad at Fox for like the press conference that they didn't live stream and they put it on the the, the next day I had to find it on YouTube. But like the the uh, shit talking and trash talking, it was epic, man. And, and like you said, y'all two guys do great on TV together, man. And I believe the next fight, if it happens, could be a very, very, very big fight. <laughs> All right. Well, we got. I, mean, I appreciate it, man. I think. Uh, go ahead. Nope. Nope. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, man. I just, I just appreciate it, man. I, I just be appreciating love, man. And um, for all the fans, I think um, uh, just you know, like the sport of boxing is probably the hardest thing ever to do. So when I see fight, when I see uh fans talk shit on these fighters, comments and shit like that, like you know, um, understand it's tough enough to get in there from man to man to fight. Let alone put on boxing gloves, people ain't fighting no more. So you know what I mean for the average fan, I just think uh, I just think it's a uh, time for you know everybody to show love to. Uh, the roughest sport in the world, man, and just keep supporting everybody, man. Support, support these fighters. Hell yeah! Like I told you uh, on IG, bro, from from TBV, it's all love, man. Win or lose, bro, you good for radio, you good for TV. So anytime you got anything you you, you want to say or get off your chest, bro, you welcome on the platform. Oh my God, and I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. I'm. I'm I'm, I'm I'm glad I got the opportunity to be on there, man, and um and uh, cause my guy kept asking me, man, but my guy, you know, gotta understand that I that I've been getting up since since for for two months at at five in the morning. No damn well, I didn't want to get up at nine and do no interview. I show as <laughs> you know, I'm not even up at nine thirty. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so. So you know what I mean, like like this time is just cool, man, and I appreciate y'all, man, and um, I appreciate you all using the platform for the betterment of of the sport. And anytime I can help you out, or anytime I can do an interview, just let me know. All right, we got a few more before we let you go. We got seven in Cali that says, "I know Wilder is your guy, but Fury is the pure boxer. How do you see that fight ending?" Um. My guy got the equalizer, man. Like, it's only one person in the sport of boxing today that you don't bet against, and that's him. That's Wilder, man. Wilder is a guy you just don't bet against, man. He literally could lose a whole fight in 10 seconds left, hit you with something that you will not wake up from. Like, God has blessed that man with the skills, the power. To uh, to commute a mob, so uh, it's, it's nobody you bet against. You don't bet against him. You know what I mean? And, and, and in the same token, man, you got somebody like Tyson Fury who's beat all the all the odds, man. You could beat, and is determined as ever than anybody, more determined than anybody, man, to do what he says he's gonna do. It makes for a great fight, man, a, a good fight. Man. And, I, and I'm just waiting. I'm ready to see a, another great heavyweight fight because heavyweight was on a downswing for so long. Um, I'm ready to see another good heavyweight fight and may the best man win. Tony, uh, what do you think? Because, uh, look, I'm not expecting you to say anything bad. Instead, I want to know what you think good uh, Javon Hill 
uh, Sugar Hill can bring to Fury. I know you trained in that gym and and, and probably alongside Javon. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, is he really adding something or is this just Fury shaking it up, adding more publicity to the fight? I mean, I think everything, everything, everything matters at that point. You know what I mean? Like shaking it up, um, adding something new. Every, every, every person in this world could teach you basketball, but somebody has something just small of a detail to give you. I think with Javen, um, Javen has been around Emmanuel his whole life. And the, the greatest attribute I think Emmanuel had was getting you in tune to what he wanted you to do, whether it was yelling you or yelling at you, cussing at you, smacking you. Um, if he wanted you to do it, he would tell you he wanted you to do it. And if you didn't do it, he would walk away from you. In the ring, he would walk away from a, if you was in a fight, he'd walk away. You know, so he, he had his ways to communicate with with you um, and get you into not only just the fight, but he just gets you in championship level mentality two months before your fight. So, Javen, man, he, he spices up everything. He shakes up. He brings good energy, man, and he understands what it takes to be a dog and, 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 and to win against a dog and to what, what it takes to bring it, bring something out of that dog. So Javen brings a lot, man, to the top. I love Javen, man. I love him. I love him with my whole heart, man. So um, I think this would probably be, like, the biggest platform he could ever, she could ever be as a, on as a trainer. So... You know, I hope nothing but the best from him. But uh, and what I about Andy Lee? I you think, think he adds anything to any fighter? You think Andy Lee soaked in enough from Emmanuel that, it, that he's out here now uh, as part of Tyson Fury's training team? I think um, I think Andy was already smart before he got here. You know, I used to listen to Andy talk all the time, and I, and I could tell when somebody's just intelligent. He's been intelligent. He was intelligent before he got here. And um, Javen just added just a little bit more to to his arsenal that he needed to to get over the hump. Um, I think Andy was already Olympian, so he he's been through everything. He he's fought everybody. He has you know that's that's value in itself. That's a book, man. You know Andy Lee has a book. He he's a book in itself that you just got to ready that you got to open up and read to get everything about him. Batman, thank you for that info. We got another one from the UK. PC Jacob says, your promotion with Charlo was the best promotion since Wilder Fury. So no question, just showing love, man. That's I'm shocked all these people. Uh, everything has been good. You know, you, everybody man. loving you. That uh, promotion was epic, man. Like, people was, was, like, actually looking forward to the press yeah, conference. Yeah. We got another one right from your city. You know, my, like I said. Oops, sorry. Go for it. Go for it. Go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Stainless in Detroit says, what up, though? This Stainless from the D is Detroit versus everybody. Are you coming to the TBV Appreciation Night in May 2020 in DR? He is consistent with that for sure. All right. See, CYP, there you go. You're you about to get some hate. CYP says, since you were living in Charlo's head rent free, how did you get evicted? What, what, what did he say? How, how did I what? He says, since you were living in Charlo's head rent free, how did you get evicted? Um, shit. Tell him there was too many mice in that. I had too many mice in that thing with me. <laughs> All right, we got another That's one. That's what from... I say, man. Good, he good, bro. Just have him on. He good for the radio. Good for TV. We got another one from Sweden. It's Killer from Sweden. Tony, you seem to lose to fighters that people consider less skilled than you. Can you explain how that makes sense? You said he said what now? I, I tend to lose the fighters less, less talented. What, 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 what was after that? No, he says that you seem to lose to fighters that people consider to be less skilled than you, meaning they think you're better than that fighter, but you still lose. Uh-huh. 
What's what's the question in that though? Can, he he wants you to explain that. Can you explain why you would be losing to someone that people consider I mean, you better he than much, them? Pretty uh, much uh, um, explained it when I asked him about Willie Nelson and Heard and uh, Charlo how he was winning these fights. Then I, I mean, that, so. no, I just I think um I think it's it's, it's I, nobody like really better than you know. Uh, like it's fighting, man. Like I don't, I don't think you know if if anybody has ever been in one, they understand what it is. It's a fight, man. You know what I mean? Like anybody's capable of losing a fight. Anybody, I don't care how good they think they are, anybody's capable of losing a fight on a bad night. And it's fighting. That's that's what happens. All right, all right. We got about one or two more here. Rod in the eight seven zero says, uh, "You called him, him Charlo, retarded during the press conference. During the final presser, a NFL player was cut for saying the word on Twitter. Was there any backlash and over the top to go there? I, that made no sense. But the last part made no sense. But uh, basically, he wants to know because you used the word retarded on." Uh, you know, the final presser, did anyone come to you and say, like, yo, don't say that again, champ? No, they came to me and said, yeah, this motherfucker really is retarded. I hear him. <laughs> yo, you terrible. Champ, that was the last question no, from I'm the people, serious, man. Though, like... <laughs> My dog. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, like, you could tell, like, he be, you could tell he'd be talking, man, just be, like, retarded, like. I think you just get him mad, man. So, you know, if it, it frustrates him, you know. He gets, uh, like Wilder said, frustrated. Hey, but guess what? But, <laughs> yeah, but guess what, man? I, that, that's why I think me and him together, you know, it's not one of us. It's none of us that's uh, uh, bigger than the other or separate than the other. Like, he need me, I need him. So, I think we together are just, like, great for boxing. Like, like boxing, boxing needs us. Boxing needs relationships, like, uh, me and him have, and um, I think uh, you get the average person more tuned, more in tune to the sport, man. I think uh, like uh, like 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 just like it happened, man. Um, we got the best views of the year. One of said the second best behind uh, Keith Thurman and um, Jose Cito. So. Um, it all came from promotion, man. I think the promotion just got to be better from from us athletes. Hey, hey, champ. So, are you making that call, or are you waiting on that call? And, and, and when? What's your targeted return? I'm just waiting on the call, man. Um, if I can have it my way, um, May, June, I'm looking to get back in there, man. Like I said, uh. I'm excited to see my what my what what I can bring myself. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what I'm what I'm what, what I'm able to do myself. Um, the fight I didn't I wasn't successful at you know I wasn't the, the most successful, but it just kind of showed me like it gave me so much hope and love from it. Like I loved myself after that. Like you know what I mean? Like I was just like, damn boy, you fought your ass off. You know what I mean? Like, the first time pressing a fighter like I just did, and now I'm now I'm asking myself, like, damn, can you really do that? Like, can is this a way you really can come out and finish your your, your junior middleweight division? You know what I mean? Can you can you continue this? And you know, I got I got questions I want to answer myself. So I think it's time. Hey, 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 Tony, man, um, I'm not counting pockets, so I don't want no numbers, and I'm not asking a number question, but I am recommending Coach Larry Wade. Get you a Wade in there. Or, or, who's or, that? Or, 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 he said, who's that? What the hell? Champ, you don't know who Coach Larry Wade is? I guess that's a no. Uh, so, so coach, no disrespect to that. So, yeah, I mean, no disrespect to it though, but nah. All right, well, check it out. He, he, he go all. He go. He go. Why I'm recommending him? Coach Larry Wade worked with Luis Ortiz, who, according to everyone, was winning the last six rounds in the last Wilder fight. Oh, he was. He was. Luis. I, I, uh, 
Coach I Larry he, I Wade he was doing tremendous. Coach Larry Wade works with uh, Sean Porter for his whole career, who everyone thought possibly won the Earl fight or at least deserves a rematch. Uh, Larry Wade. Oh, he do. I think he do that. He it. Oh, Larry, is, um, is Larry Wade the, the, like the black strengthening guy? Yes. 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 You you might need some of that, oh, champ. Yeah, especially, know, I, especially if you want to walk people oh, down. No, I know exactly who he is. I just didn't know his name. Yeah, especially if you want to walk people down, yeah, I knew, man. I know exactly who he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, like, like, like for me, nothing, nothing is out of the question, man. Like, but like I've, I, like I've always just want to want to win, win fights, man. And I think uh, winning by any mean necessary, man. I, I, I may, I'll make the adjustments that need to be made to win a fight. So, period. Man, listen. Imagine you training next to Porter. You gonna, you gonna be pushed, and he, and you gonna push. You know. Yeah, no, I agree. And that Vegas heat, them I gyms totally over there, man. But listen, champ, we had you on for so long. You are so gracious with your time. We want to thank you, obviously, for that. Thank you for answering all the people's questions. Thank you for being a people's champ and coming on the Boxing Voice and, and, and just talking some boxing with us, man. We appreciate you. Get back to helping the kids. We truly appreciate that you do that as well, man. Look, you could be in the car driving. You could be in your house chilling. Instead, you in the gym teaching, man, and we appreciate that. Oh uh, man, I appreciate you, man. Not a problem. If you got any social media that you want to give out, you know what I'm saying? You can go ahead and give it out before we let you go. Uh, just follow me on Instagram, man. At Made in Detroit 1990. All right, All right big champ. dog. Thanks for your call. Thanks for, uh, for uh, being on the show. Take it easy. Have a good night. Thank you, champ. There you have All right, it, guys. Not a problem. Former WBC champ, Tony Harrison. Yo, I always want to call him Tony the Tiger and shit. <laughs> it's just like Tony, right? I think it's the cereal showing my age again. Uh, fire Tony interview. Fi fire interview, man. Really happy he was able to. Yo, this dude. Yo, I never seen a dude make that many accounts in my life. Wow. Man, he just coming for it, huh? Uh, real quick, man. Number three on the, on the docket. Uh, Anthony Joshua. Versus Kubat Pulev to possibly be headed towards uh, Istanbul. Uh, what, what, where Turkey, is that next? Baby, Turkey. Tur Turkey. Now, uh, I was looking, man. I know Turkey in, in the U.S., you know what I'm saying? Maybe you got some little, I know. Uh, beef? In don't his country. They, don't tell me they got beef, man. You always coming with these political scares, man. Because in his country, he's an NBA player, right? Oh, man, bro. And, uh,. He 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 was uh, he said something in, about the president and they wanted him to uh I guess I don't know maybe maybe it's not Turkey maybe it's Turkey I don't know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It definitely is Turkey how an NBA player in his country became a major enemy of Turkey president so I don't know if everything is cool but hopefully. It is. I think, uh, and really, it has nothing to do with the USA because it's going to be the zone. So it's UK and Turkey. So USA is kind of out of it. But uh, if they make a play and uh, the money's right, I'm pretty sure Eddie Hearn would take it under consideration and looking at Pulev. I mean, he's not the, the scariest guy uh, uh, in the world. So, yeah, man, if you're, uh, if you're AJ, then you're taking it with both hands. Let me see what else we got on the docket really quick. News and notes. I know we'll come back to the AJ news in just a second. My guy on the phone. I already got to the Showtime card. Uh, Eddie Hearn came out. He said he made uh, Andy Ruiz a seven-figure offer to fight Dillian White. You know what I'm saying? Now, look, man, they so vague with the seven, seven-figure seven offer. You know what I'm saying? They ain't giving you no no uh, dollar amount. We had Frank Smith on. He, he couldn't confirm how much it was or how little it was, just that they, they made a seven-figure offer. So, uh, we'll see if uh, Andy Andy's team come out and uh, say anything about the offer. Uh, Andy came out on his IG today, and he was sweating. You know what I'm saying? He was on, on the treadmill. He was doing some running, so maybe Andy is uh, getting ready. 
But go ahead, Ness. Bruh, Andy was looking huge talking about fashion over partner. But let me get out to Joshua Greer, up and coming contender, holds multiple regional titles. I was uh, double checking. Uh, got an NABF and a WBC, I believe. Uh, but Joshua Greer is signing top rank and making a lot of noise. Mr. Greer, thank you first and foremost for your time. We appreciate you coming on and Happy New Year. How are you? Man, thank you guys for having me, man, and uh, happy New Year to you guys too. Happy New Year's, man. Uh, so, uh, what's uh, what's the outlook for the uh, boxing twenty twenty New Year for you? Like, what's what's your plans, and how soon do you want to get back in the ring? Oh man, I'm, I want to get back in the ring. If it was up to me, I'd be back. Uh, I'd probably get yeah, myself and get back in the ring ASAP. But you know, it's uh, it's uh, you know, people ahead of me to uh, make things happen. You know, so I got a, a great team. You know, big shout out to uh, Antonio Leonard, uh, Jay Prince, and and uh, Top Rank. And um, we're looking uh, to be back in the spring um, against uh, a, gr a good opponent. You know, because I don't like uh, you know easy fights. I like to prove myself. I feel like I have a lot to prove as a young fighter, and I want to be groomed to be the best in the sport. So um, you know, I'll take the uh, stairs in front of the elevator. And you ain't go to Bob and be like, man, I see that Wilder Fury card, y'all ain't. Got the undercard all the way mapped out. Let me get on that. You know what I'm saying? That's technically oh, yeah, spring. I definitely like to, but you know that thing is already that thing is already you know um, you know scoped out for certain fighters or whatever. And um, you know, like I said, man, I, I know uh, I got a great opportunity ahead of me that we've been talking with top rank and uh, Jerry Prince about. So you know, I'm just uh, looking for uh, looking forward to everything to come out. What's the what's that great opportunity? Is it gonna be still at the same same weight class, or is it gonna be moving up? Because if you're talking about yeah, great oh yeah, it's gonna be at the same. It's gonna be at the same. It's gonna be at the same weight class. I can't speak much about it. You know what I mean? It's a lot of negotiations going on right now, but it's gonna be something nice. Now come on, man! Y'all just signed a new way now. <laughs> I, 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 you no, you're over there chuckling, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just signed a new way. You talking about it's gonna be major? That's a major fight right there. Have you seen a nah. new way fight? Oh uh, <laughs> uh, no, that 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 fight gonna happen. That fight gonna happen, but not that one yet. But it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna happen. Give me your thoughts on uh on a new way. You know what I'm saying? What do you make of, of him as a fighter? Uh, I mean, he's a great fighter. He done what he um he done what he had to do. You know, so far he's been in a a tough, uh, great fight. If not the fight of the year, one of the best fights of the year with uh, Nonito Donaire. You know, it was a great fight, and uh, I definitely watched the fight. And uh, you know, um, I mean, he do what he has to do. He's he a good fighter. You know, I love and I love to uh, I love to fight him. Do you think the the monster tag is is a little bit overrated, or do you think that it possibly fits him? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't really, you know, what I mean, get into, you know, what people say or whatever. You know, everybody uh, is entitled to their own opinion. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, that's just that. You know, but at the end of the day, I'm a fighter, and I go in there and do what I have to do, and uh, I'm a winner at the end of the day. I go in there to win. Now, I, I gotta ask you, man. Like, oh, your next fight? Do we got a a concept of what the pillow gonna look like? Do you got a little something? You know what I'm saying? Coming out with you? Oh, yeah, you know, most definitely it's going to be a, a, a nice pillow, you know what I mean? And uh, I've been working extremely hard. I'm uh, back working in uh, Chicago with my old trainer, George uh, Hernandez. I'm back working with him in Chicago, so I've been in the, in the jungle, you know what I mean? I'm uh, definitely ready to uh, use my uh, pillow and uh, show it to the world. Mr. Grizz, so what, what, what prompted the change uh, to go back to your old trainer? Uh, honestly, uh, my last two performances, yes, yes, I won, but I'm not a, uh, a fan of them, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't like the performance. I didn't like, you know, uh, really, you know, too much, uh, I, I didn't really, really like too much, you know, about it, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. So I know what I have to do as a fighter and as a, as a businessman, you know what I mean? I know what I have to do, you know, I can't be emotionally involved, you know, like, uh, John Foreman is a great guy, but, uh, he just, you know, it's just, it's just not for me, you know, George. Me and George go back when we have had so much success together, pull upsets together, and done great things. And the split between me and him wasn't uh, about boxing. We never had a problem with the fight. And that was never a problem about other things. And, you know, we humbled ourselves as, uh, you know, not uh, not just coaching and fighting. We humbled ourselves as men to, you know, sit and talk and 
you know, uh, right our wrongs and just, you know, work things out for the bigger cause and go out there, you know, to win these belts and win these championships. How is it uh, being on top rank in ESPN? Because we've seen you uh, on, on there a lot. Like this past year, I think I've seen you on there like two or three times. And it's always on Sam Primetime. It's always a lot of people watching. So how is that uh, promotion, uh, from, well, not from the outside looking in, but being the guy that's being promoted? Oh, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a great feeling, you know what I mean? Just me, you know, uh, being, you know what I mean, one of those kids that, uh, you know, didn't have a really a, a, a great uh, outlook on uh, what my life was going to turn out to be and a, 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 a map out on things, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a great feeling to, for, for, to be on TV and to be promoted like that and be just, you know, living my dreams, you know what I mean? It's a, it's just a great feeling. And it, and let uh, the ones behind me know and the ones in my city that if I could do it, you could do it, and it's possible for anybody to, you know what I mean, um, you know, write their wrongs or, you know, everybody make mistakes in life so that you can turn around and do whatever you want to do in life. Positive. How hard is it being back in Chicago, training and also being around old friends, being around family, and being around like things like that? Like, keep keeping that focus. Oh, man, one thing about me, I'm a real militant guy. I'm a focused guy, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have nobody around me that would, um, you know what I mean, endanger my career, endanger my life, or uh, my boxing. So, you know, I, them, them type of games, I don't play at all, you know. So, um, you know, uh, I get the, you know, I get respect from my people. You know what I mean? I love my city. It's a great city. Uh, I love training back here, you know, being around my kids. I'm a father, you know what I mean? So, it's a great, you know, great feeling. But they know when it's time to train and when it's time to, they uh, get into tunnel vision. They know that I'm I'm locked in, and it's really it's not nothing too much to talk about. So, champ, um, was there any animosity between you and uh, Glenn Desern? Oh, uh, well, when we fought, uh, it was just the fact that he um. I don't know if he was hungry. You know what I mean? Because it, it was a weigh-in, or what the case might have been, but. He pushed me, you know what I mean? And um, and I don't know if he ain't like what I said in interviews, you know. If I did say, I mean, I say he was a basic fighter, but it wasn't nothing personal for us. I was just, you know, telling what I thought was my opinion and the truth in my eyes, you know what I mean, what I've seen from. And, um, you know, he pushed me at the weigh-in, and, you know, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't play those games at all, so I ain't like that, you know what I mean? And uh, I have some words with him, you know, and uh, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, after the fight, we just two men trying to feed our family, and, you know, we both realized that after the fight, and we spoke um, in a locker room and everything, and, uh, you know, he apologized, I apologized to him, to him, and, you know, it was a great fight. Yeah, man. Uh, so so what did you think of his wife's fight Saturday night? Did you have a chance to watch that on zone or do you not have zone? No, most definitely, man. I'm a boxing. I'm not just a boxer. I'm a boxer like fan. So I watched the fights and everything, and I definitely watched the fight. And it's crazy. I just well, I actually didn't catch it when it first came on because I was watching another card. But um, I just watched that fight like the day before yesterday because I it was like rumored that the girl she was fighting was a man and all this like crazy stuff that was going on, and the girl said she wanted to fight Clarissa. So I watched the fight, you know, the day before yesterday. And it was like, you know, if that's a, uh, I don't know really what's going on with that, you know what I mean? And I'm not going to speak on it because if it's not true, then it's like, you know what I mean? It, it's wrong for people to be saying that, you know, but if it is true. Nah, it's absolutely, both, it's absolutely, I mean? it's absolutely not true, champ. Uh, like I've watched her amateur fights. I've watched her, her heavyweight fights. She's totally a woman. She, she looked more feminine as a heavyweight because she was 300 pounds, um, I mean, you know, okay. there's still going to be questions uh, that are probably testing questions, but she also went through VADA for this fight. You know what I mean? And VADA's one of the most test. Uh, oh, okay. Well, you know, well, that's, just a, that's just a boxing game there. You can't, you can't satisfy everybody. Everybody will have something to say no matter what. If that's the case, look, she just went out there and pulled her upset and won a belt, and people still got so much to say they discredit her. So that's just a boxing game, and that's like serious. You know what I mean? But it was a great fight, an uh, action fight, you know what I mean, back and forth. And it was just a, it was a, a, a great fight, you know what I mean? I, I don't really got too much complaints about that. So now, uh, you said you, the, your trainer, what's his first name? George, his name George Hernandez. Ah, so you left 
Keller Plant's trainer, right? That's who you were with? No, that's not. No, I wasn't with Keller Plant's trainer. I was with uh, John Foreman. He's not Keller Plant's oh. trainer, but he trained out in L.A. Okay. Oh, Pullman looks so similar to to Plant's trainer. I thought that was the same guy because they look young. <laughs> they both look very nah. young. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, you said you expected back in the spring. Yes. And how's been the transition down? You know, you you obviously went from twenty two to one eighteen now. Well, obviously, I actually, when I first when I first got into boxing, like I was like coming off the street. Well, when I first got into pro boxing, I was coming off the street from the amateurs because I took a two year uh, like I was I was really done with boxing after my amateur career. I got a decision in the Golden Gloves that when I was an amateur that I didn't like, and uh, George Hernandez really brought me back into the game, you know, because I was kind of done with boxing at that time, and you know, he uh, I was just kind of living wrong and stuff like that. He brought me into brought me back into the uh, he brought me into the pro game and I turned pro with him and uh, I was just kind of really finding myself. I didn't know too much about the weight. I didn't really have no knowledge of the pro game, you know. And um, you know, I kind of learned as I went, but you know, I started learning my body also. And then uh, that's why we had certain fights at one twenty two. And then it's with the management team I was with at the time. They didn't really know what they were doing, so they was you know just getting fights to me where they can, you know what I mean? So I was fighting at 124, 125, you know, stuff like that. And um, I even, yeah, I fought at 122, but once I got a, um, my first fight at 118 was the James Gordon Smith when I first brought the pillow out. I got the, uh, a message from his uh, promoter on Facebook about the fight. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can make 118, no problem. All I have to do is work hard. Like, I haven't even really been working, you know? Um, I started working hard for that fight, got down to 118 and held in my business. So, champ, can you uh, give us your story? Cause I, it sounds no, no, real, real quick. He says something big coming up, and I'm looking at at, at the rankings. I and like I should have known this. The only Tete lost his belt to a guy named John Real Casamero, and he is uh, deals with Frank Warren mm -hmm. or did dealt with Frank Warren. Now I'm not the smartest guy in the in the room, but is that a possible fight that you possibly looking at too? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. I would love that fight. So, so I want to know the story because uh, it sounds like, you know, you and your trainer had to get it the hard way, get fights where you could. Uh, so when did the transition to James Prince come and, 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 and how? Uh, uh, give us some of the differences to before Prince and after having someone as, uh, you know, well-versed in the game as James Prince, uh, uh, you know, got in your career. Uh, okay. Um, when I first, like, when I first, um, uh, like, had turn pros with this one management team, um, they, it's the same management team that Adam Lopez, the one that fought Oscar Valdez, that he was talking about that they didn't know what they was doing in his career. I was managed by those same people, so, it just uh, it, it wasn't really a good fit. But once I, once I, um, when I fought, who was I fought? I fought uh, Leroy Dabla. James uh, James Prince was at the fight because he had another Chicago fighter at the time. His name was Kenneth Sims, and he was at the fight. Him and Antonio Leonard, and they saw me fight. And uh, Jay Prince said from that day he knew that he wanted to sign me, but he he wanted to see more success after that. So he watched. He watched me closely after that fight, which I wasn't even know. I wasn't even uh, I didn't know at the time. But he watched me um, closely after that, and maybe two fights afterwards, I was uh, training in California, and um, so my uncle, my it was like two of my uncles. They called me. They're like, "Man, uh, Jay Prince looking for you. You know, he he's gonna holler at you because I guess Jay Prince was in Chicago for a book signing, but I was in L.A. at the time." And he got word out that he wanted to uh, sign me, so everybody from Chicago was calling me. You know, like all the all the uh, real guys from Chicago. So I'm like, cool, give him my number. You know, so I talked to Jay on the phone, and he said, man, you know, I just want you to get hold it to me, up, and I'm gonna get up, it to you. Hold up, you know, just, hold up, back me up, back me yeah. up, because I, I, you about to paint me a beautiful picture. So what you said, all the who, what guys from Chicago, who was calling you? Oh uh, yeah, the the the, the 
the real official guys uh, in Chicago. I'm talking so, about like, so so the, James the, Prince, the real guys in Chicago. <laughs> so James Prince flew into Chicago and it just just made some calls to the. To the OGs, legend, to the OGs, <laughs> like yo, call somebody, somebody get, somebody get, get Slim yeah. on the phone for me. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. some movie he shit. He sent out a text. He, he sent out a, he sent out a text because one of the one of the guys when they showed me the text, he sent out a text and he was like, man, uh, give me in touch with this fighter and it said Joshua Griff. And uh, I got calls from all over the place. And my uncle and them, they was calling me. And you know, my uncle and them, well known guys, they was calling me. They like, man, so and so looking for you. You know what I mean? And and he told me that Jay Prince looking for you. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, give him my number. In, you know, and they gave him my number. And that's my talk to him. So now, was was that Glenn Desern fight under Prince already, or was that one of the fights that he was looking at? Because the reason that, no, that, that I, was that wasn't under Prince. Yeah, my first fight. My first fight under Prince was uh, with Top Rank. Okay, okay, because the reason I ask, and that's probably, you know, one of the reasons he signed, because you said Leroy DeVilla was someone that you fought when you met him, but you stopped him, and Glenn got the decision. And I know when you and Glenn fought, that was, like, one right. of the quotes that I've read about you, you know, saying, like, man, you know, I stopped somebody he fought and went the decision with. So I was just wondering, maybe Prince made that connection yeah. as well. No, nah, no, nah, I uh Prince was still watching at the time and then when he uh called me that when he called me that day, it was crazy when he called me that because this was after matter of fact, I think it was after the Desert fight. Yeah, it's crazy why right it was. It was after the Desert fight and he called me and he was like, uh, you know what I mean, like he like, I just want you to get a feel of me and I get a feel for you. So he flew me to Houston, I chilled around this was like trading in Houston. I went to different events with him and I just got a feel of him and and what the first thing I noticed was all these guys that he had around him. I, I was reading his book before I met him because I really wanted to know about who I was meeting and who I was involving myself with. So I read his book before I met him. And when I met him, all the guys, there was a picture of him and all his guys when they were like maybe in their 20s. And when I met him, all those same guys were like probably in their 50s and, and 40s, and those same guys were still around him. So I, I saw right off back that he got 20, 30-year relationships with these guys. So he must be doing good business and taking care of his people. And that's the first observation I made. And I'm like, you know, there's somebody that, you know, uh, that's a, a lawyer guy and he mean what he's saying. There's some, somebody I want to deal with. Definitely, man. Uh, that must have been beautiful. So now, did he come to you with options or was it like, yo, Mr. Greer, we got uh, something cooking with top rank? Or, or was there more on the table for you? Because at that time, the show box was airing you. You were really hot. The whole pillow thing, it helped a lot. Yeah, but you know, at the time, he, he one thing about Jay, he's not closed minded. He's not one of those guys that's always his way. He he said he was willing to put all the promoters on the table to see who got the best deal, you know what I mean? And who will do the best for my career, you know? And uh, that's what was done. And uh, that's when we had to meet him with top rank. And it was a, it was a, it was a perfect fit, you know. It was a perfect fit, and uh, they, they, they lived up to everything that they said, you know. And we did our part. Now, the reason I ask is because obviously that puts you on, uh, you know, a political across the street, and your only loss mm -hmm. is to Stephen Fulton, who should be fighting this weekend, right, or next mm -hmm. weekend. And uh, he's the IBO champ, and I, uh, you know, I, yeah. I just want to know where you are with uh, wanting or ever getting that rematch. Well, honestly, when I fought Fullerton, I fought him in his, uh, I fought him in his backyard. I fought him, um, I fought him at like one o'clock in the morning, one thirty in the morning. It was supposed to be a six round. It was a four round. I dropped him in the fight. They called it a slip, and it turned out to be a majority decision. A uh, four round fight in his backyard. So I mean, even his own family was coming up to me like, "Oh, you won that fight," you know, and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, man, it's no more victories in in boxing. You know what I mean? I don't like losing. It was a, uh, uh, you know, it kind of it really turned me turned me up after that. You know what I mean? That's when I really start was like, okay, this is how y'all want to play. I just really started like tearing through guys because that uh feeling of losing was like one of the worst feelings ever. So um, the way I'm at, uh, honestly, in my career, like. When I get to 122, I would love that fight. But we tried to rematch him after that fight plenty of times. He was fighting Chicago one time, 
And I even, this before I was with Top Rank, I told Al Heyman, um, I, I told um, my coach and my manager at the time to tell Al Heyman and them, they don't got to pay me no room and board. I live in Chicago. Just pay me for the fight. You know what I mean? And him and his team turned down the fight or whatever. So I'm not going to base my career, you know, chasing after a guy or whatever like that. So my career still moves. I'm still making big moves. I'm, I'm still getting paid. You know what I mean? I'm still doing what I have to do, and I'm still going to be champion probably even before him. Do you keep keep an eye on him? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you watching his career no, unfold? No, I mean, I, 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 honestly, I, 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 I watch boxing, period. So, like, he, I, he not one guy like, I watch specifically, like, for six reasons. But if uh, if it's a card that I'm watching, he on, I definitely, like, I, I watch, like, the last fight I watched on him was he fought this uh, Mexican kid that uh, Too, Too Sharp was uh, training in. He actually, like, he, he looked good that fight to me. Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, I want an honest guy. Like, I can't take that way. He looked good that fight with the Mexican guy that he stopped with a body shot. Like, he looked good, you know? For sure, man. Well, Mr. Greer, I want to thank you, obviously, for coming on The Voice of the People, talking a little bit with me and my co-host, Michael Gross. And uh, we do appreciate your time. Uh, we're, we're happy to have you on. And I wish we can get you back on. As soon as you're ready to drop that news, you keep in so close to the chest. I can't wait to see what it is, man. I'm I, I'm kind of like sure. <laughs> anticipating it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey man. As soon as I as soon as I get the, as soon as I get the okay, man. I'm definitely gonna let y'all know straight up. For sure. Well, man, we appreciate you. Like I said, if you can, please give out any social media for anybody not following you can do so. And once again, man, thank you for your time, brother, and good luck with your career. All right. Thank you, bro. I guess he ain't giving me no social media. All right, there you got it. Joshua Grip, but you can find him on IG and all that other good stuff. He's on top rank being well promoted. Um, and big ups Jay Prince, man. Yeah, he's doing his thing. He's starting to grow. Man, 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 Bro, to I remember, I think the only dude he had when he started was might be Brian Jennings. Oh, Andre, oh, okay, when he started, okay. Okay, yeah. you're right, yeah. Yeah, man, but man, you went to Chicago, shout out to the OGs, man, the OG call. That was like, crazy. That was Jay a dope Prince. story. Got a nigga chain back, like some dude. Why? What? What was them? Them, them young dude? Why and B N? Them young motherfuckers. Oh, I don't know them dudes. One of his artists, know what I'm saying? I chain forgot today. Snatched. I was supposed to uh, train to Kevin Gates because every rapper that I mean, every boxer we talked to. I mean, you've been told me, and I and I ain't want to pay attention. But I'm like, fuck. I might have to listen to an album now. I never heard him. Kevin Gates? Yeah, but everybody, oh, yeah, every Howard, fighter yeah. y'all talk about, like, yeah, I listen to Kevin Gates. I'm like, damn, I'm going to have to yeah, listen yeah, to yeah, Kevin yeah. Gates. Kevin Gates official. Just put on Kevin Gates' playlist, and you'll, you'll, you'll definitely get some some workout in. But, yeah, man, Jane, man, got his guy, man. He, 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 man, Jay Prince, I'm giving him his proper respect. Yeah, man, he, he man. He's selective, you. though, man. You know, he don't just work with everybody from what it looked like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, Zane. Lil Zane, what's that? The rapper? I don't know that nigga riding at me. Uh, my uh, guy, uh, stainless just, just takes me, Lil, Lil Zane. <laughs> oh, that's who he got his chain back for. I remember Lil Zane had like one hot song. I know people probably call him Boot Corny and shit. Nah, but... It was some dude named like YBN Amir or some shit like that. I don't know. But yeah, man. Let's Lil see. Zane, you... I think, was a rapper. But whatever. Uh, that's that's it for the guests. We ain't gonna do Patrick today because Doomy was supposed to translate, and he ducking. Like Did the you sauce. have anything you wanted to say about that uh that uh Anthony Joshua and Kubat and uh Istanbul? Nah, man. If it, if it goes down, uh, I just got to see how far Portugal is. I right, real and quick then decide. Uh, Conor McGregor. Uh, Yo, said, that's the news. I can't believe we slept on that news. What you mean? You want to get a world title? Forget a world title, bro. Like Pacquiao. Pacquiao yeah. and his manager posted a poster with Conor. And then kind of did a sit down with that dude from ESPN, Hemi Halani. There you go, Wani. There you go. I said Hemi Halani. <laughs> Yo, uh, Baloney Salami. He sat down with Baloney and Salami, and he told him like, "Yo, I want to box again." And he was like, "He was like, you want a world title?" Uh, and and he was like, "Yeah." And Baloney and Salami was like, well, yo, you going to get, it's going to take you a couple fights. He's like, what? Nah. nah we <laughs> negotiating with Pacquiao, he said. I'm like, what the Farouk? Uh, yeah. That's know, good, man. though. That's a smart move by, by Heyman. Throw Pacquiao in there. 
You know what I'm saying? So Floyd again gonna get enticed because if Pacquiao do big numbers with McGregor, yeah, Pacquiao beat McGregor, man. <laughs> Pacquiao gonna beat McGregor, man. We're gonna get that big payday again. Pacquiao gonna have more Pacquiao thinking, better man. be. He better beat up, hey, up McGregor man. though, because Floyd, Floyd stopped him. Floyd stopped him. Yeah, y'all seen how good Pacquiao look against McGregor, man? He nah, he gotta now. look real good though. Floyd yeah, stopped man. him, bro. Floyd walked him down. Now Pacquiao gonna stop him too. Yeah, but Floyd walked him down, bro. I don't know. Uh, I don't Mauricio Suleiman is firm on, on his position that professionals should not fight in the Olympics and uh, any professional does and is under the, the, the WBC umbrella will be sus uh, suspended from that section body for, for two years. Yeah, I was in the convention when they ruled on that, and I'm with that, man. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, uh, what's his name? Who's going back? Hargrovic. Uh, uh, Dog. Yo, how is he going to regress his career? Like, you a pro making money, and you about to go back into the Olympics? Hell, yeah, dog. Your boy so, what, so, 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 so let me ask you, Mike. Do you think Eddie, all of a sudden, like, he went back and got a goal? So does his pay go up now? Like, yo, we got to. <laughs> no, we, 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 we already are under contract, bro. What you, what you talking about? I know. <laughs> like, what is he doing, bruv? I don't know. Oh, uh, man, wow, man. Hey, man. Antonio Brown and Logan Paul might actually have legs, man. I'm seeing what? Antonio Brown training the zone, reposting and saying that negotiations. Let me see. Can. I don't know who Antonio Brown is. Antonio Brown, man. Oh my God, Antonio. He the he the nigga that that that, that threw a bag of dicks at what his the fuck? Uh, at his uh, baby mama. He bought some dildos. Yeah, I think it was like 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 little gummies or whatever. Uh, shout out to Dennis in the Tampa area. Just got out the hospital. Long time listener. Uh, French Bulldog owner. My, one of my alumni's, man. Get well soon, Dennis. What you asked me to check? Oh, the zone. Let me see yeah, how uh, that uh, Jesse Hart and Joe Smith peaked at. Bro, oh. let me, let me. I'm glad you said Jesse. When I do this, it's not cutting you off, Mike. You just sparking conversation. Jesse Hart is ranked number five at 54, but Tony Harrison not top 15 in the WBC. Jesse, Jesse Hart is number five in the WBC. At 54? Tony, at 54. No, I ain't want to say that no, with that lying. man on the phone. You lying. Bruh. Jesse Hart. Jesse Vargas. Oh, Vargas. I'm like, nigga, Hart? Bruh, but right. Vargas is fighting at 47, and he had one fight at 54 versus Humberto Soto, older than my grandfather. Jesse number five in the WBC? In the WBC. Come on, man. And his next fight at 47. And the champ, the ex-champ not even ranked in the top 15. Yeah, I thought, I thought only the IBF like that did that shit, bro. That yeah, is freaked up. Yeah, that's foul. That's that is foul. foul, man. That is horrible. Horrendous. Did, but did this is what I'm saying. He ain't got no bite. See, Keith Conley would have jumped on the phone like, Suleiman, what the hell happened? Oh, no, that's a typo, my friend. That's a typo, my friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, come on, bro. What, yo, you, yo, bro. I'm telling you, we going to get us one. Listen, we still young. 54 years old, 55 years old. I got me one fight. I'm Cameron Duncan looking like Cameron with no hair. You know what I'm saying? Stomach sticking out. I got my own Ennis. I'm telling you, it's going down out here. I'm telling you. Because there uh, ain't no way I'm learning too much. Jesse yeah, Vargas is number five. Let that shit sink in. Yo, I'm a good look. Yo, Sean Porter is not even ranked. He's number 10 in the IBF. This is what I'm saying. It's, it's not fair. He's number 10 in the IBF. But at least the WBC respected him enough. But guess what? Who was at the convention? Ken and Sean. Mm. Where, where was Mauricio at? Sean's wedding. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Who who on this show? Who on this show said, nah, I never even talked to Mauricio, but you was at the convention? Come on, Harrison, you wildin', you slipping. You could have asked big, me who to who, introduce you. Who got a big WBC medallion? <sighs> Ken Porter. <laughs> Sean, yo, who got the who got the trainer's belt? Yo, Ken man. Porter! Uh, Jesse Harden and Joe Smith peaked at 673,000 on ESPN. On ESPN, ESPN or the app? On ESPN, ESPN. 600,000 versus who? Jesse versus who? Joe the, Smith? Yeah, main event. Damn. That's, that's no that's, star, though, bro. No, but that's the whole point. 
and they did six hundred. Yo, six hundred is a lot. Javante's a, a le- not really, not bruh, for ESPN, bro. Javante's allegedly a star. He doing six hundred. Okay, Charlo's a star. He might Charlo's a star. Money. He did two forty. Charlo's a star. He did two forty. Clarissa's the quote. She did two hundred. Six hundred is good for a dude that keep losing. And a white dude that's still knocking down trees after he beat. You seen him on his IG? He dragging. Tr- I cannot believe it. Like you see, that's why I keep talking. I always repeat this. God know why he didn't make me no champion. My vacation would have been longer than that. My man already at work on Monday. He beat you Saturday. If I'm Jesse Hart, I haven't gotten out the mirror from from yelling at myself. My man beat you Saturday, went back to work chopping trees and dragging them shits through the mud on Monday. That's insane, bro. Shout out to Joe Smith Jr. Real shout right out there. to Joe. Yo, shout out. No, for real, bro. I'm telling you, yeah, boxing, yeah, boxing is some some amazing stories. Amazing. Man. That's man, crazy, bro. You, bro. What's in you? Sergey Kovalev accuser. Has, right. uh, Not to mention he was off for a year. Yeah, he did yeah. that off a year layoff. Where we just had Harrison saying he think it was the year layoff, huh? Huh? <laughs> Light bulb. Sergey Kovalev being sued by his assault accusers. I guess uh, he ain't made payment, so she is uh, moving forward to assault. She's the lady that said he punched her, I believe, on a plane or or or, or somewhere like that. So uh, see see how that plays out. I, I think Fred actually did an interview with her, so you guys can go check that out too. Uh, Martin versus Washington added to the Wilder Fury card. Uh, we told y'all that. Shields versus Habazin peaked at 288,000 on Showtime. Uh, Bob Aram says Miguel Burchill and Oscar Valdez will happen. Uh, That's Tevin a damn Farmer. shame. That's a damn shame. He ain't going to give none of his fighters at 130 a unification. Instead, he going to give his token fighter a, a title shot. Yeah, man, it's kind of like a freebie for uh, Burchell, too. Tevin Farmer says he whoa, is... Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Guru, because you are becoming one. Are you saying that you think Burchell loses to Valdez? I said it's a it's a gimme for Burchell. Exactly. Saying, so you think Valdez loses to Burchell? That's a fucking lose. Oscar Valdez. He would get walked the dog with Burchell. Miguel Burchell. 130 years, sir. Shit. Yes, sir. Miguel, wow. Miguel, even wow. though Miguel ain't, ain't fighting, man, he got something in him that that that. He, I mean, I seen he, he what he fighter. did to Francisco Vargas, but Francisco Vargas is not Oscar Valdez. Oscar Valdez is a young guy. Now I know he's vulnerable. He's been put down by everybody. He's wide, but his aggression, that left hook, and the tutelage of Reynoso. Now, what's this third fight? Maybe with Reynoso. Sparring with sparring in there with Ryan? Come on, champ. Let's go, champ. I mean, I like to believe, but Mike's always right. I, happen, I sell man. it for you. Look, I'm entertainment. Mike is the right right one. <laughs> hey man, make it happen, man. Make it happen. Tevin Former says he is with the shit. Oh, I've been seeing it. My man want Tell everything with Gary. To make that stop, bro. Gary should have never became a bully, Anno. <laughs> Anno, where you at? You heard me? He said he with the shits, baby. What? And this ain't the se- this the second time he yeah, said something like tweet. two days ago already. Yeah, yeah. He on his ass, and that was his tweet. That's what he said. He said, Gary, after I beat JoJo, I'm on your ass since you talking to everybody ducking you, cause nah, I'm with like the it. shit. I like it. I'm with I the like sh- it. I'm with the and shit. And that's a title shot too, Gary. That's two two division champ right there, Gary. Bro, but you know where that what happened? Time? Who who had Tevin Farmer on the show? We did. Who had yep. Gary Russell on the show? We did. we did. Who asked those questions? We did. Who ran with them quotes? The world. That's how yep. it go, man. We starting fights over here. You know what I'm saying? Um, Sports Ill- Illustrated. And I Chris can't believe Maddox. this. I can't believe this. <laughs> This don't make no sense, no, really, honestly, right? Like, any fighter... Why are you mad? Oh, let me because any fighter getting fighter of the decade... Any fighter getting fighter of the decade in this decade and it's not Floyd... It, man, don't spoil it for them. Because they... Sports it's, Illustrated. The fix is in. The, the fix is in. we grew up on, baby. The one that had the bathing suit, you know what I'm saying? Swimsuit edition, the baseball edition, basketball. Sports Illustrated. Got a, got a uh, lineage. Got a history. They names. Andre Ward, the fighter of the decade. I don't mean to laugh. I, I, I'm laughing at this. 
look, man, I can I can see your argument. You know what I'm saying? A pound for pound, you know what I'm saying? A, a fighter at the full left, conquer 168, was an underdog in a lot of those fights in the World Boxing Series. Came up to 175, slayed the boogeyman. Motherfuckers thought he lost. He came right back, knocked the boogeyman out. You know what I'm saying? And then he rolled off into the sunset. Now, fighter of the decade, though? When I look at that, man, I got to look at Manny Pacquiao even more so than, than Floyd because Manny, you know what I'm saying, is still out here fighting. He's still out here doing things. I, I know Floyd beat him, and I know I know Floyd is, is, is most people fighters of, of the decade, and I ain't got no argument with that. But just seeing uh, uh, Manny just prolonging his career, getting a good win over guys like Keith Thurman, still being able to beat uh, Broner, and possibly, you know what I'm saying, getting a big fight with – Earl Spence uh, later on this year. So, like, Manny Pacquiao is still out here fighting in a decade, just got over with. But uh, if you got Floyd, like, I ain't got no argument there, man. Floyd beat Manny, and that, and that right there kills all, all all arguments. But Andre Ward, that's tough right there, man. He he definitely top four, top five uh, 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 of this decade. But, but uh, yeah, man, I can't have him number one. And Floyd is the only decade fighter, bro. Simple. Simple. Last but not least, Tony Yoka is in negotiations to sign a deal with Top Rank. He is also advised by Jay Prince. So, Jay out here making making moves. Uh, Tony Yoka, you know what I'm saying? I would French love for this to happen, bro, because, I mean, how long have we been hearing about Yoka and not seeing the guy? Like- I mean, ever since the, the, the 2016 Olympics, you know what I'm saying? That's when he turned pro uh, after the, the Rio. But, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's taking the slow route. He had his... uh uh. Controversy over there, missing drug tests, not showing up, failing, whatever. Uh, he, I, I guess he was clear because at one point he, he wasn't going to be able to fight, but he, he was fighting again. So I guess he's clear of any wrongdoing. So I would love to see him on U.S. soil. Uh, Top Brink is slowly trying to amass a nice crop of heavyweights over there. So I think Tony Yoko will be a perfect addition to uh, uh, the stable. Bruh, I mean, if if top rank signs Big Baby and Yoka, gotta gotta give your hat off to them, you know. Um, cause when Eddie signs heavyweights, you know, we're happy for him. And 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 listen, uh, Big Baby and Tony Yoka are two great additions. Yoka's trained by Virgil Hunter. Last we heard, uh, Hunter told us he was training him. And Big Baby, we know what he brings as long as he still can bring what he used to bring. Absolutely, man. Got to take your hands off to them. They were able to pull these two things out. Looks like uh, Jarrell and Miller is not going to be on that wilder card. I've seen uh, um, Coppertier tweeted out, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just too late, you know what I'm saying, for uh, for them, them to work out something. So hopefully we'll see the return of Big Baby later on in uh, March or April. Maybe he'll be headlining his own card or they'll throw him on uh, maybe um, on the card of somebody else. But yeah, man, that, that's it for the news and notes. You know what I'm saying? Anytime you're ready to open up those phone lines. Don't forget, if you're listening right now on YouTube, take a second down and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps with the visibility of the show. If you want to go one step further, head over to theboxingboys.com slash affiliate sponsors and click on that Amazon link. Not the Amazon Prime link, the, the actual Amazon link. Sign up. Well, not sign up, but bookmark that link. Save that link and do all your shopping on Amazon through that link. It costs you nothing extra, but we do get a little kickback every time you use our link. So please do so. Thank you. Oh, Ness, my nigga. What it do? Speak of Amazon, boy. It's a show on Amazon Prime called Fee. Fee? Fee, F-E-E-D. Okay, it's a fut- Fee. It's, it's, it's like a futuristic, like kind of, not not really futuristic, but they got the implants to where all this shit is like in your phone and shit, like right here and shit, you know what I'm saying, in your head. Oh, I and love somebody, it already. Somebody... Hacked them, it start hacking them bitches. Uh, <laughs> First episode, somebody started hacking them bitches. Coming. I was like, "Whoa!" So that shit got me going. And then, and, and I'm just telling you one thing: this kid is like getting counseled or whatever, and he got like his on, on his program. He got like 18 things playing at one time. You know what I'm saying? And dude just told him, "Man, turn all that shit off." So, so he turned all, all that shit off, right? Nigga, three, four seconds later, the motherfucker started shaking. He couldn't, he couldn't motherfucking, he couldn't uh, uh, not have that shit on or he'll start shaking and shit. Dude, he said, turn it back on. Nigga, he, he was back straight again. I was like, what the fuck is going on? But I, I'm only on episode one, so 
Amazon Prime, if you got it, man, check out C. Definitely a good show from episode one. Sound like it. Uh, let's go out to these sponsors, get these phone lines open. These calls are brought to you by El Camino Electrical Services, experts in electric vehicle charging stations. For consultations and turnkey installation, visit us at El Camino Electrical Services.com. Remember to rate us five stars on iTunes. All right, let's see. We got Mastermind NO. Talk to us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you a young fella. And he comes from. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got me high right quick. I ain't gonna even lie. I was. I was kind of low coming in. You did. Now I got that energy, you hear me? Uh huh. See, bro, that's a classic right there, man. Everybody who don't know, whoever new to the show, you did. That's how I come in. But see, bro, first of all, I'm an audio, man. I'm doing all this rip- ripping and rambling and all this shit. What's, I'm an audio sound. You sound good, champ. All right. I just want to make sure. Say, hey, bro, I got to get on y'all, too, bro. Say, hey, bro, how y'all let Tony Harrison get on this motherfucking show with all that bullshit and y'all entertaining this dude, man? You heard that shit? Man, Harrison talking like, dog, like, what you mean? No, 11 rounds to, 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 to nothing? Hey, champ, la- last I checked, you was a mastermind. Why you ain't drop no question? Man, because I, I, um, I, I got to download. See, you, I, I, be mess- I, be, I be doing it the old school. I got to download the app, man. I said, you know I came in on them last time, but I couldn't find it. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I'm going to download the app tonight. I ain't going to hesitate. But see, bro, Harris to come on this thing, man. Talking like he's still talking shit. Man, you just got your ass whooped, man. You just got knocked out. But it was you a come great on here fight. Like you the man. But it was a great fight, and he fought a great man, fight. Man, I see, man, man, man. Get that man the clown shit, nigga who man. called in at the yeah, AJ uh-huh. one. And like, why, why right. AJ trying to be all fake? I'm a boy, what happened to the old AJ? Now when, when a nigga stay the same, y'all won't be mad at, at that too? Make y'all mind up, homie. Look, Look man, stay hungry. Be humble. Yeah. That's what we want out of Harrison, you dig? That San AJ shit. We want you to be humble. We want you to be humble in defeat and humble in victory, you dig? He come on here. He, man, you, you ain't heard? He talking like he whooped your little ass. You dig? Yeah, man. I was, man, I got my energy back when he knocked me down the third time. Man, what you mean? How you got your energy back, man? Man, you no, you you went you went down the first time, then the second time you got hit with about three uppercuts. Look like man, look like your eye rolled back, man. And then the man, you ain't throwing no punches on the rope. This man beating your ass down. Yeah, man, man, I was just man, I was just about to come in the fight. And yeah, I was just like, yeah, dog, yeah, that was that was hell, man. So just shit. Detroit stand up. Nah, man, we don't want to hear that shit on TBV, man. You got your <laughs> ass bust. Try to get the rematch. You know, try to get heard or something, but that's over with, man. Let's cut keep it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> nah, we don't worry. That shit on TVB, man. The CYP, Boomerang. A CYP. With the eviction. Notice. I want to send a special, a special invitation to every fighter out there who's a great skilled boxer, who be winning rounds, but you need a place to lay your head other than that mat when you get your ass knocked out. Come to TBV. We got the place for you. We celebrate more victories over here. We'll give you an interview where you can talk to everybody and get questions where everybody's kissing your ass. That's what we'll do to you over here. But CYP gonna hit you with that hard question. Killer gonna hit you with that hard question. So you better be able to... T- oh, my and bad. You, you can't And you was in the minority. 
That means you hey, was I, in the minority. I, that means that you I, didn't see what the rest of the world saw. That don't mean oh, you right. Oh, oh, no, no. no. All, that, all the questions were overwhelmingly fight. for I positive. Don't care. I don't care. I was at the fight. Where were these broke bitches at? Haters going to hate. Haters going to hate. <laughs> what I saw, I saw his fans surrounding me hyped up in the beginning. Then I saw him sitting down. They didn't even stand up after the seventh round. I looked at him keeping the score. I asked him what the score was. They said, nah, he losing. Nah, he losing. And it got real quiet while I got real hype. While all the lions was roaring, them little cubs were sitting there looking, look, looking like Mufasa just died. That's facts. I don't give a fuck what, what, what fake fans say who's just happy to hear a dude on the show. We talk about real dudes with Detroit shirts on, real women with them Detroit hairstyles. Says CYP. Go ahead. <laughs> I said, says CYP. Okay. Says me, says me, says my girl, says the two people that was with me, says Fred, says this whole crew. We was all Same there. Picture. All Everybody was in the, in the arena, man. That's what happened. Y'all, one thing y'all know, I ain't got to fucking lie, yo. I ain't got to lie. His people, we was going back I and forth proof. on the scorecards. They realized he was losing before the 12th because we was counting the score every round. They whole they crew, these I people came from Detroit. But I guess in person, it looked different, though. It looked different from the stands, though. I think it looked different from the stands. Y'all yeah, can believe what y'all want. Y'all can keep it going. I love y'all because I was just telling my girl, as long as these motherfuckers are, are crowning people for losing, and now y'all making Charlo into Wilder, man lost 10-2, I'm never going to shut up. I'm never going to shut up. You're making me grow. See why pee out. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, man, look here. I, I, I give him 9-3. <laughs> no, I can't give him 9-3 because they didn't go the whole 12. I don't even remember my scorecard. but Bro, uh, I just remember after that knockdown, I was like, damn, Charlo ain't, ain't, ain't won around in a while. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> me, me personally, I don't know nobody, about nobody else, but I'm just like, damn, Charlo ain't won one here in a minute. Tony done, done, done been down. Look here, man. Sometimes I'm, I'm wrong, which rarely, rarely ever happens, but. So most of the time, I'm in the, uh, the majority, man, or sometimes in a minority about my uh, opinions, depending on who the fighter is. Mr. PBC, baby. Boxingwoods.com. I'm the fighter. Canelo talking about he believed he can win. Go to my kitchen. Get the sharpest knife. Cut the bullshit out. I don't care what you do good. I do every fucking thing great. Mr. PBC, baby. What up, my big back black bat? Man, what up, homie? I said that. Where the A side? <laughs> where the A side? Swinging from the cave and shit. <laughs> Yo, what's good, y'all? What's good, Mike and Ness? Um, man, it's crazy, uh, Ness. You never heard Kevin Gates. That's crazy, crazy. Um, I liked uh, his answers when it came to the uh, top five art. What was that? I'm an old head. Uh, I see. At least you bumping, um, you know, the West Side, um, West Side Gun. You know, if you bumping that or not. I thought you were gonna say like West Side Conviction. I was like, damn, you, 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 you took a shot at him right there. <laughs> <laughs> at least you bump. At least you you need to bump Griselda. I like Griselda. Um, I like you know his artists that he came up with. I was actually uh, on iTunes actually looking them up. I've been hearing a lot know. about them boys uh, from uh, upstate New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I respect his uh, tone coming in, you know, like, he's a champ. He's not going to be cool with losing. And, you know, he's going to see it his way, just like Tyson Fury see it his way, too. I mean, every every champ has their day. Um, I don't want to see the third one. I, I want Charlo to move up and keep on doing what he got to do. All the Charlos, too. Um, and uh, what Tony Harrison said about those other fights in the zone, I was like, damn. Like whoa, he might have, he might be on to something with that one. Um, and that's my call. I'm uh, booming right back in pretty soon. All right, Dom. Well, thanks for calling in. We're going uh, continue going down the line. All the boomerangs, ringers, and uh, so forth. JD, motherfucker. There's a lot of things I like to do, so man, uh, man. just try to get on my get on my game. Man, man, man. I don't know why they gonna call me, but I'm a 54 pounder. But uh, I have a brother that's at 160. FYI, we we we, we do have fights this weekend. I, I, I know they ain't, you know what I'm saying. 
steak and lobster, but pack of ramen noodles ain't, ain't bad for the week. Man, I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to the Colbert fight. You know, Chris Colbert. Uh, I think that fight gonna be entertaining. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it, man. Uh, <laughs> J Rock gonna take care of this dude. Uh, what's his name? Rosario. Rosario. Yes. Um, not really looking forward to that. But he he get a home hometown fight, so that's cool. It's um, free on Fox too, so they ain't, the, they ain't bad either. Yeah, yeah. As far as the the Tony Harrison uh, interview, uh, uh, I, I I think you know what had those knockdowns not happened in the eleventh round, I think I had them I, I had them up slightly. So I mean, it was a good fight. It ain't nothing to. Like like N O was saying, and I'm you know I'm a Charlo fan. It wasn't like that to where dude just talking out his ass because he was he was definitely uh, getting some rounds in the bag, but uh, you know uh, he wasn't just getting it. <laughs> N O made it sound like he was getting his ass whooped from pillar to post. You know what I'm saying? Like nah, that wasn't the case. It was it was actually a good fight, back and forth fight. But uh, that's all I really wanted to say as, as far as the interview go, man. But with Josh Greer. Yo, that I mean, listen, man, dude is impressive, man. Um, but Steph, uh, Stephen Fulton, he's on a whole another level, in my opinion. Um, I'm looking forward to Stephen getting a big fight, man, a real big fight. Uh, I don't know who that big fight would be, but I'm looking Rico. forward to it. Uh, I be? guess Figueroa, right? It's gonna be Rico. What, what happened with that, man? Nah, what happened with the uh, Brandon Figueroa it's fight? Was not they hyping I'm that shit up at man. one point? Yeah, that's what you think. I don't think Brandon. Uh, I don't think Brandon. Honestly, I don't think neither guy really wanted because both guys was uh, was in the ring with each other and they weren't really talking spicy like how they should to sell that fight at that time. So I ain't gonna say Figueroa don't want hey, it. Well, I ain't gonna say Fulton don't want it, but they ain't really interested in each other from the outside looking in. Real, real quick before I go, man. Um, y'all throwing names out there. My, the, the boy, the babyface assassin. He, he looking to get one of these big fights. One, of the, if like if oh, if uh, Harrison won a hometown fight. Uh, Eric Walker. Oh, Eric Walker. Okay. Thought you talking I about think, uh Adam. Yeah, like, yeah. Adam for the fight. Tell, tell, you, tell your spawn partner, holla at Lou, man. Stop trying to make fights for your man's in them now. <laughs> He giving you hey, a little man. bit of work. Hey, you trying to saying. get him a fight and shit. Yeah, they're working, JD. Yeah. Hey, I'm like, just saying, man, dude. What? What's sitting out here? JD, man, you put. Yeah, he want to fight too. On, shit. Nah, we we fuck with Eric, bro. We watched him on the Contender and shit. JD, you know what I'm saying? Callis, man, he put some but weight then, on. But man. then Brandon beat the brakes off him. Who? Nah, I'm fucking with you, JD. Nah, man. Nah, nah. Nah, but he did win. Brandon Adams did beat uh, Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big up to uh, to Brandon Adams, you know what I'm saying? Hold on, real quick. Jody, you still on the line or not? I could bring him on. No, 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 that's right. Oh, we got Super Chat uh, coming from uh, Henry Brown. That clown, no time, Thurman. What the what? Why, why he bringing Thurman into this? Needs to retire unless he fight Bud or Spence. What the hell? What the Who fuck is that this guy? From? That's, that's Henry Brown. Also, he ain't done. Sweet Pete, I mean, Sweet Spence. Plus, Sugar Tank Davis both need to take more risk. All right. Henry Brown took now you read the field. That young Jedi. Can you ask Tony if he's thinking about going to the WBO route into the title contention? Or is he looking for other fighters like Castiano and hope like a J Rock or Charlo will get him a shot? I think we answered that question, young Jedi, but thanks for the super chat. And Jonathan Wilder being the owner. Something like that. J Rock is not man, main rock lobster Mike. J Rock is not main rock lobster Mike. J Rock is fighting Yetson, bro. We know the outcome. That's all I'm saying. I ain't. I, I'm not saying that the, the fighter is not of the level. I'm saying the fighter is of the level. I know what I'm gonna go and get from J Rock this weekend. I'm gonna get a dominating performance. I, I seen the guy do the interviews. I seen how focused he is. He's not taking this guy lightly, and he wants really to make a statement in, in his whole time. So I'm gonna be watching, of course. But I might have another TV or something on. You know what I'm saying? Con McGregor coming back this weekend. All righty then. Time to go to
Dun, dun, dun. You know how these bitches is in the sport. Total disrespect. Kid has no class, no style at all. I'm a gorilla, I'm a dog. I'm a dog, I'm a gorilla. The smartest thing you can do is to stay away from parents. I'm the it can't be the boogeyman if I'm, if, I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, I'm chasing him. You wanna bet a hundred thousand on that? Let's bet a million. Let's bet a million. J Mac, that you? Yeah, what up? What up, boy? Yeah, that's me. That hard, man. Hey. I know. Thank you. Shout out to Will King for the um, ringer. He, he worked diligently on it. Diligently on it. He did a good job with it. Um, best, question, best questions of the night was CYP and Killer. By far. Um, it was funny listening to Tony Harrison answer. I think he paused. Like, what the fuck? Like, what these niggas say? But uh, he kept it pretty professional. But some questions was hilarious. Um... I, it sounds like, dude, um, like the question was proposed on him, like what he did in the first fight. I don't see how he didn't go back to that. He went down there and had a weight count. Sounds like with Keith Thurman talking about he pointed out he see how Keith Thurman make weight. So, obviously, he went down there to make weight as well. But I think he should have stuck it and stayed in the direction he went with the first fight and went back up to the Colorado. Um, I don't know why, but I guess he felt like that was the best decision. J Mac, uh, is your mic rubbing on your shirt or coat or neck or something? I don't know. Is it better? Yes. All right, my bad. Uh, for uh, Tony Harrison, um, turning down Willie Nelson fight, he was uh, that's delusional. I don't, I don't see why he wouldn't want. To uh, be the guy of revenge and fight with a guy that would stop him. Yeah, hey, nigga, you, what you, you going you, through the snow pile or something? Yeah, right now? something is definitely wrong. Maybe uh, I don't yeah, know. We're we gonna, we, we gonna come back to you, man. Are you driving? No, he walking. Yeah, it's not. Uh, I'm not walking. Is that better? Man, uh, that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Hang up, man. We gonna come back. Yeah, back we gonna go back to you. We gonna come back to you. We going out to. Boomerang, Stainless, Detroit. Motherfucker murder, mayhem last words of the stainless. Told you I would kill you, squeeze that thigh, aim it. If you're talking money, then you're speaking my language. Or shut the fuck up and grown folks' conversation. Stainless. Yo, TBV, what's good, baby? We in here, man. Up? What's up with you? You still working, man? You out here, goddamn me? Dropping piss and shit for these goddamn jobs and shit. Nah. Damn. Somebody removed me from the call, man. <laughs> they, they, they kicked you out. They, don't, they ain't mad at me, yo. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna stay here and look at it, man. Yo, yeah, somebody, somebody kicked me. Stainless, you gotta start over. Somebody kicked me off the call, man. They, they putting this out the call, man. Y'all being disrespectful. Yeah, bro. Y'all nah. niggas bullshit. Uh. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm sitting here trying not to. My brother brought me like two grams of Granddad Perk too. I, I think he forgot I said I got a drug test in the morning. I mean, yeah, man, least, I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to switch tomorrow, it up, man. You, uh, you can celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I get back, man, I'm going first thing in the morning. So by the time I get on the TBV show, I'm gonna be lit as a motherfucker. Just, just a heads up to y'all. Uh, good show as usual, man. Tony Harrison, man, I, I'm trying to show love to this nigga because he's from Detroit, man. And he just let C CYP and Killer embarrass him with the motherfucking questions because he ain't had no real answer for him, man. And then he tried to slight me on my shit, too. So I'm with C CYP, man. You got evicted on that shit. Shout out to CYP and Killer, man. Uh, again, though, man, great show, great interviews, man. Y'all keep that shit coming. And I'm going to keep asking that same question now. So if you don't see my question posted, just go ahead and ask it anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's, it ain't even for them. It's for us so that everybody who, call, who calling in and listen will know what's going down in May in the Dominican Republic. You feel me? That's all it is for me, man. It's, it ain't even about seeing the other boxes. It's about seeing my TBV family. And, you know what I'm saying? Enjoying some time with y'all. Uh, that's all I got, man. I'm finna... I don't know what the fuck I'm finna do, man. I just got home from work, and I'm looking at this green. I can't smile. So I guess I'm finna listen to this show some more, man. Thanks for all the uh, all the material, man. Y'all cast, y'all always working, man. And I don't know anybody that's working as consistently as y'all. 
or who got as good quality of product as y'all. So, TBV running these, these streets, man. That's all I got to say on it. That's so, crazy, I always man. say... Just grab me some of that CBD honey or some CBD gummies, man. They'll put you right on the bed, man. It's a good night. Nah, man, I'm a nocturnal insomniac. That should be a waste on me. I just... I'm going to just work out till I get tired or something, man. Like I said, it would be sitting here waiting on me in the morning, man. I didn't already put in a call for another zip anyway. So, like I said, man. And I'm off for the next two days. I don't even know how I pull that shit off. So, I'm going to be lit as a motherfucker. Yeah, you about bitch. to OD, man. You about to OD <laughs> on weed, man. Hey, man, I'm trying to set the Guinness Book of Record for the first look of the OD on weed. <laughs> be looking like, don't be a menace. Oh, man. That's impossible, though, bro. Niggas fall asleep on that shit. You can't. You, know, you burn the house down first for your for your OD, and you're gonna fall asleep. Yeah, so uh, I see everybody congratulating CYP, and that's all cool. But we we gotta be a little bit better with the questions. If we are gonna get at Dom, we gotta get at everybody. Like we don't want again, we don't want them not to come back. You know I don't think mean? it was a. Uh, I don't think it was disrespectful. I don't think it was on a level at all because I me. Mean, when you say that out publicly, bro, you you leave yourself open for that. You said I'm living in, in his head rent free, right or wrong? Absolutely, but so you 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 open yourself up for that question by saying. But that's that. not a question. It is a it, bro. It's a it it's like a a, a play on words about the fight. Exactly, literally, there ain't literally. no question there. It, it, how did you lose it if you was in his head? You know what I'm saying? And, and you said you would never lose to a sucker. Pretty much what 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 what's what I man. And, 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 and you know, I, I got much love for Tony, you know. So like this ain't me uh uh bashing Tony because I'm I'm always here for Tony, but it's like you, you gotta give credit with credit. Like it was a, a witty way to ask a question that just like how how did you how did you lose, you know what I'm saying? After winning the first fight and knowing that that's all you you, you need to do. Well I wit- it was pretty witty, witty or not, we all seen his reaction. Right? <laughs> I got it was too many mice, was smart, which was also witty. No, no, Good no. Both. No, no. The reaction was a delay. You hear him, y'all? Mike trying to act like he that shit took him back. He was like, what? Bro, I don't think it took him back. Like, nah, I, I think he's going to not. Nah, I think Tony at the end, like, bro, I was proud of Tony in that fight. A lot, of, a lot of people were proud of Tony by the way he got up in that second round and big down on that mouth guard and started fucking, in my, in my humble opinion. Start whooping Jamelo. I mean, listen. Jam- bottom Jamelo. line, champ. The questions Jamal. have to be a little more respectable. You know, I I never not ask anyone's question, but I also don't want to be here cringing and worrying if I'm disrespecting a fighter because someone else chose to ask something. You know that just come on. You know what I mean. Like, you heard him. You heard him. Before the question was asked, you heard him talking about why he wouldn't want his son to box. And, you know, he talked about the hateful comments on on the fighter's page and how he thinks people shouldn't do that because of how tough the fights are. So think about it that way. I hear you, champ. I hear you. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too sensitive and and maybe I just don't want to lose relationships. Lamar Jackson was, you know what I'm saying, this year's NFL MVP, but people saying he choked in the playoffs, man. Can, can you imagine what his timeline is consisted of? I'm not, I'm not saying it's right, but being a public figure, you know what I'm saying, and being in, in the public eye, that's what comes along with it, you know what I'm saying? Not, not saying, again, not saying it's right, not saying that, not one bit. But at the end of the day, man, that's what you sign up, kind of sign up for. Okay, we're going to who's next? We got hey, nigga, even you get hateful comments. Like that, that, that's not just like and like it's boxes, like YouTubers get fucking hateful comments, like Yeah, but no dra- one but no one is setting up an interview for me to hit, hit me with a and again, not that his question this particular question wasn't hateful, but like that's where it can go. As you know? of yet. Exactly, and it can you know go I mean? that way. We got one dude talking about big black bats the the day before. Now this guy talking about evicted. I mean, you never know what's gonna nah, come big next. Big black bat with it. That that shit right there would just. Yeah, right. I don't know what the hell you he were thinking about right there. Look, I stopped screen sharing <laughs> the questions because. <laughs> 
I stopped screen sharing the question. I thought at first I'm like, yo, I'm a screen share so other people could see. Like, yo, we asking the people's question. But I'm like, let's see what they saying first before I put it on the screen. You know what I mean? Yeah, but in, like, in, in, in our way, like, if you feel like it's a, it's a bad question, hey, like, fuck it, don't you show, you show good judgment, like, like I said, I've never not asked the question. Fuck that. They've all some they've shit. always been uh, some shit, some shit, I, bad. I, I, you know what I mean. I just don't want people to get carried away. Is all I'm saying. So far, they've been, you know, borderline. Right? We just don't want to cross that border. I don't. Killer Sweden, talk to me. Talk about questions, but goddamn, killer. Oh, hello, guys. It's Otto Valin's brother, Sven Valin here. How are you guys? Yeah, Ivanka says hi. You guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, the interview was pretty good. He started out very strong, you know. He answered all the questions very skillfully, but he seemed to get tired late, though. I, so I think he lost the interview by TKO. You know, I think he lost the interview. You guys still hear me? Yeah, we hear you, killer. We hear you. Yeah, uh, I have to admit, guys, I'm a bit depressed. You know, uh, Shaniqua, she left me. So I'm a bit uh, sad about that, you know. I'm dating you this. Uh, me, I'm, 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 I'm dating this new. I'm dating this new girl, uh, Laquisha from Inglewood. So we'll see how that works out, you know. And uh, that's all I have. I should right. be going in the morning. <laughs> With everything. <laughs> Steve Ringa, Chicago. What up, Steve? Dude, this guy from Sweden, man. I gotta go to Sweden one day. Steve, Ain't Sweden yeah. where uh where where ASAP Rocky got locked up? If that's the yeah. Way. Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? What up, Steve? Yeah, fuck Sweden. ASAP ASAP Rocky got locked up out there. Yeah, I want to say yeah, I want to comment on what you said, Ness. You know what? It's your show, man. You're within your right to say that. You know, people need to realize this is the only podcast in the world that's given us fans access to these guys. I mean, you're bringing on promoters managers and you're giving us access to ask these questions you know what you're within your right to say what you said i mean i i, I think you, you know you have a point because you don't want to lose access to these guys this is the only podcast doing this man and people should respect that so I, i'm with you on that now in saying that uh i think people are sleeping on this weekend man i think this weekend we're gonna see some really good fights uh, you know, it's not the marquee names of the of the sport, but uh, but I'm gonna go with my picks. I think there's gonna be an upset, and I'm debating. I've been debating all night on what the upset's gonna be, but I'm gonna pick J Rock to win by a knockout late, probably like nine ten round, and then I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick Colbert, but I think that's a tough ass fight. That's gonna be a real good one. Uh, and then I think I'm going to go with the ups. I think I'm going to pick Seals over Alvarez. I know I might eat crow for it, but that's what I'm going to do. I, I really feel there's going to be an upset this weekend. And those fights tomorrow on Showtime ain't going to be bad either. But I'll just keep with those three picks, and then uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, Steve, big dog. Thanks for calling in, homie. Absolutely, we're going to ride in the A70. Talk to me. What up, Rod? Hey, what up, man? Hey, uh, I'm just gonna echo what CYP said because he was absolutely right. I was getting a little irritated with uh Tony Harrison on here talking about talking as if he fucking won the fight. Hey, you did good. Mike, how much credit do we get to teams that play good for two and a half quarters and then get their ass beat when it's crunch time? In basketball, football, or even baseball. It don't even matter, do it. We don't even talk about that shit. We just talk about who fucking won, right? That's how we need to start doing in boxing. And in boxing, we giving this dude all this credit for fighting good for, for six out of the ten rounds and then getting his ass dropped three times and everybody patting him on the back. He, I would feel bad for that shit. If I got my ass whooped and motherfuckers pat me on the back, I'd be like, what you expect for me to lo uh, lose every fight? Like, you you cheer me on when I win. Don't be cheering me on when I fucking lose. Like, what am I, some kind of charity case? 
but I'll, I'll also say this too, Ness, with that question that you asked, you said you didn't understand it. What I was asking him was, was if, um, I said, I said, did you get any backlash? And do you, and I meant to say, do you feel this over the top, but I didn't want to put too many words in there for you to read. So I was hoping you would, you would get that part to say, do you feel it was over the top? Because I felt like it was a little over the top to go there, you know? But he called a man retarded, and a retarded man kicked his ass. And now he's taking a victory tour as if he won. That's that's my call, man. CYP was absolutely right. I hear you, Charlo fans. I hear you, man. Voice of the people, man. Everybody got their opinion, big dog. I hear you, Charlo fans. Hey, man. But listen, but but look, Rod, but Rod right, is talking. Yeah. But let's be clear. Rod is saying he thinks CYP is right when CYP called in to say that this is a safe haven for the loser. That's what he meant CYP is right. It's two different CYP <laughs> debates going on right now. There's the CYP call debate and the CYP question debate. Uh, we got Pat in Beantown. Pat in Beantown. Yo. What's good, guys? What up, Pat? Yo, Pat. Chill on chat. Um, shout out to you guys for having uh, Tony Harrison on. Um, I didn't get to catch it, but I'm going to definitely go back and listen to it. Uh, my pick for the weekend, uh, um, J-Rock and Alvarez. Um, but uh, I know they're not the best matchups, but I'm definitely still going to be watching. I don't want to downplay the fights because, you know, when you downplay the fights... Um, people step up and give you a performance that you've never seen before. So uh, I'll definitely be tuned in, and I'm ready for a good week of boxing. Thanks, guys. Peace. Pat, man, thanks for calling in. Uh, we're going out to California Zone. Mr. Info oh, Joe. Tell the truth, Joe. Tell the truth. This portion of the show we call... In the nose, in by my brother. What up, Info? Yo, yo, yo. What up, Mike, the Oracle? I'm going with anybody that you pick, man, this weekend. <laughs> what up, Ness? What up, hey. Tim? Uh, hey, great interview, man. TBV, man, pound for pound, number one. Hit those thumbs up. Yo, uh... I do go. Uh, uh, I gotta agree with Steve, man. I think this fight in you uh, that this fight for Chris Colbert, man. I'm picking Chris Colbert. It's a good step up fight. I don't think it's gonna be an easy fight though. Uh, shout out to J Rock uh, showcase fight, man. He need that. Uh, he's gonna rip Philly. He's gonna do what uh, Jesse Hart couldn't do and uh, rep that city right. Yo. Uh, Shout out to you, man, playing N-O, N.O.'s intro, man. I was just telling him that uh, the other day, man. You know, it's, this shit moves me. And Mike's intro, uh, I'm glad you brought that one back. Shout out to J-Mac. Your shit is tight and right, too. Uh, but um, it's going to be a good weekend of fights, man. I had something else to say, man. I've been on so long, I done forgot my damn point. But uh, hit those thumbs up. You're listening to the voice of the people. There is no equal. I'm out. Joe, man. Oh, yo, 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 oh, yo. Oh, oh, oh. Let me bring you back, champ. I already was pressing the button. Right? Hey. Uh, no, I'm just glad to hear that Tony Harrison thought the idea of uh, taking on the Laura fight as a comeback fight. He liked it that. So uh, that's good, man. I think that's a good fight for both of them. That's all I got. Peace, family. Joe, man, as always, thanks for calling in. Uh, looks like we got another alumni in the building. I used to get it in Ohio. Original killer. Yeah, man. I had to hop on real quick, man. The, to the to the Charlo fans, uh, the one nigga who was really sounding like the one nigga who was really sounding like he won the fight after he lost the fight was Charlo on the first fight. 
So y'all beat my man Tony just for being a confident nigga. And I just think it's kind of funny. But um, I got a little conspiracy theory behind that whole fight anyway. If you notice, this second fight, Charlo fought pretty much the same way. Uh, y'all can't tell me he came behind like by a concerted jab or he he changed up his... It, it was the same Charlo. Motherfucker who fought different was Tony. And he fought a more dangerous fight by st standing straight up in the pocket. Now, I think his ankle was fucked up. And I think that's what made him not move. I think that's what made him change his game plan. So I'm thinking like he's confident because he's like, man, I fought you at your own fight and I did pretty good. Nigga, better than what I thought. He was even saying this shit like, I didn't know I could even fight like this. So I think like once this nigga, um, once this nigga get his ankle back, I think he, he really wants this third fight. So I think that's another reason why he's sounding so confident. But that's my call. All I hear is two fandom split. Because he literally, yeah. he literally he came on here and was like, to the Charlo fans, and then gave a bunch of reasons why he want Tony to get the rematch. I mean, but but he, would, he did have like a valid point, you know what I'm saying? Like, to the Charlo fan, that's how Charlo was after the first fight. Couldn't believe it, wouldn't accept it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, at least Tony, you know what I'm saying, gave credit what, what credit was due. Yeah, but the difference is Charlo ain't get knocked out. Tony got knocked out. That's what the Charlo's fans saying. Like, yo, like, you know, you 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 would stop. Hey. Hey. Uh, Stonebone Box in Colorado. What up, Stonebone? What's the motherfucking damn deal? What's the deal? Hey, man. Ness, can I ask you a quick question? Did you call Tony Harrison and ask him to come on the show? Or did he call you seven times saying, hey, can I come on the show? We called him, man. We called him right. multiple times. Right. So these, why are these guys acting like he was calling you trying to run on his victory lap or something? No. He was man enough to come on the show after a loss. What a lot of dudes wouldn't have did. You know what I mean? They would have been like, yeah, I'll come. And then they lost. You, them niggas have changed their number. So, you know I mean, big respect to him coming on here and owning up to getting caught and losing the fight. He didn't say I won that fight. He said I was winning the fight. So everybody, calm down. It's going to be all right. That was a great interview. That was great energy. You know what I mean? And he shouldn't have been down. Man, get away from Florida, man. He should have been back out here in the mountains where the where the greats train. You know what I mean? The gold medalists train. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew that was coming. It's the Olympic city, baby. You know what I mean? Where he think he, why he think he won his title? You know what I mean? I saw him out here, man. He was in a gym with all these boys out here, man. Bud them was out here. Everybody was out here. And Tony Harrison was out here running the incline, looking good. And he and he performed up to that level. So just just stay back focused, man, and, and get back. Go back to the drawing board and hey, work your way back. I mean, he was he was over the fights that y'all was in. So that's a good thing. You know what I mean? You you was naming people and he was like, Yeah, that'll be a good fight. You know what I mean? So we'll see where that go and I'm ready to see these fights this weekend too, man. I wanna see J Rock. Dominate. I want to see Chris Colbert, the next star. You know what I mean? The next young guy with the skills for PBC. So I'm going to catch y'all on the uh, in the morning. Peace. Stoneboy, man, you got to start getting your questions in, man. We'd like to see what y'all, you know, what you got, what you got for these fighters. Um, Who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Looking like Boomerang, Mr. PBC. Whoa, on a Desperado tip, Boomerang, J.D. Yo, yo, I just wanted to, um, one, one other thing that, that, uh, that Harrison said that kind of, kind of pissed me off a little bit. Listen, man, everybody, dude ain't retarded, man. He, he, he just from Texas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, look, everybody came freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Some people good with the rebuttals and the instant uh comebacks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and rap like you you can't you can't make a motherfucker be a good freestyler. You know what I'm saying? Either you got it or you don't. So that I mean that's all that is. I mean everybody can't fly from the hip with the good responses and shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but. Uh, other than that, man, listen, the dude that just called in making all the excuses for Harrison, like, damn, I ain't even hear Harrison say nothing about his ankle. Like, did he even say anything about his ankle? W was it 100%? I 
I mean, I ain't hearing no interview of Harrison complaining about his ankle, so I don't know why he bought the ankle up. But, um, listen, man, it was a good fight. If they have a third one, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, I still think Charlo won both fights, but uh, uh, that's just my opinion, man. But that's all I got, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. CYP, that, 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 that question, I agree with you, Ness, man. Like, it's got to be like some kind of, um, especially given what, what Harrison had just said, you know, it, it's like a troll. It was like a troll question. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, just keep the questions like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of agree with uh, Ness on that one, Mike, but that's all I got. All right, champ. Thanks for calling in. Uh, we got J Mac Boomerang. Damn, you inside the bag of potato chips. How's up? Yo. Just go for it, champ. Yeah, just go. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, I don't, I don't know what y'all heard. Uh, just call back in. I'm gonna repeat my first call. Um, shout out to um, Will Keem. Will Keem, thanks for the uh, for the intro. Um, I actually didn't have a problem with the questions. I think boxers shouldn't be that sensitive. I'm sure they ask different questions all the time. Um, I don't think the questions was out of hand. They were funny as hell, though. I mean, he did pause. And stuff, but, but J um, Mac, we both but, know boxers shouldn't be sensitive, but we give you public stories of boxers being sensitive and no longer wanting to deal with us. Well, I mean, like I said, that's still to be. Um, I don't think the question was uh, what's going on. Long day, respectful, you're not cursing them out and not insulting them and stuff like that. That was a quote that he put out there, and it just got back. You got, you know, it, it got played around back on them because. He didn't win the fight, so he had to answer for it. Um, so, like I say, I, I see a problem with the questions. Um, I did agree with him. I, it, it was real touching. I like how he is with his sons and how he feel about him. And, like, you know, got to be special in order to be in the sport. Um, he's talking about his son jumping rope at three and all that stuff like that. That's, that's just excellent. Um, I did agree with him also. With uh, I forgot something I agreed because a lot of stuff he was saying, it's like he don't hold himself accountable for his reasons why he falls short. Like he said something about his first camp. He went to uh, Colorado and, and was running the mountains and stuff like that. Um, I, I want to say it worked out for him. He looked better. He didn't gas out and he was able to, to come away with a win, whether we agree with it or not. And so then he goes and takes a year off and then have a weight camp. In Florida with Keith Thurman because he was pointing out how KCI Keith Thurman made that weight. So obviously, I'm just gonna assume that he had he was trying to get that weight down and make his weight. So um, I don't see why he went backwards into the second fight and didn't do what he did the first time to get the same results. Um, I like Tony Harrison, but he always come up short and it seemed like his losses always look duplicate. Like for some reason he fade out. Um, even Mike when Mike pros the question saying he got. Um, cocky or whatever, he said he got comfort, um, comfortable. Well, uh, he get too comfortable in big wins um, because we've seen him lose to Willie Nelson the same, Jared Hurd the same, and now Charlo. Uh, I am a fan of the third fight because he did come away with it, but I ain't going to put no pressure on Charlo to make it. I mean, they got other stuff he could go after, but bounce back to Charlo just to clear would be a good fight, plus the shit talking would be a good build-up. Um, I I do like uh, um, JD mentioned Babyface because uh, he acted from New Orleans and he changed. J Mac, thanks for calling in. We're going out to my Jean Bear. Talk to me. What up, my Jean Bear? Yeah. yeah, what up, guys? Uh, Ness, thanks for for um, for asking Tony my question. Um, Which one is yours? I, I've got a. Oh, Alvaro, okay. I didn't, yo, never made that correlation. I did not know you were Alvaro all this time. Shout out yeah, to Yeah, brother. Um, but now, nah, to, to the point about the questions, just keep it respectful, man. You know what I'm saying? Ask the hard questions, but there's no need to be a troll to these fighters. We want to continue having them on the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
<clears throat> sorry, um, to the point of Tony, you know, taking a moral victory for his fight, he should. He fought his ass off. I mean, that's why we love seeing guys like Salido, like Gabe Rosado, like Gotti. It's part of boxing. Don't compare your fucking girly sports to boxing. Keep fucking basketball, football, all these other garbage sports out of it. Uh, these, these guys, they Watch go to the ring. They give, they, they give everything, man. They give everything. They deserve They deserve those moral victories. I don't care what anybody said. Um, so, yeah, man, just stop being trolls. Just give these guys the respect that they deserve. Uh, that's my call. You guys have a great night. All right. Yo, and, and you know, um, I give out moral victories, man. I guess sometimes because I'm biased, you know, maybe I won't give Fury all the credit he deserves, but I'm sure on, on certain shows I've given him tons of credit. Um, I, I've always given Diego Chavez credit in losing. You know, some guys just do well, like Gabe Rosado. You see, I always want to see him in a fight because you, you know what he brings. You know the test that he's putting before that person. Uh, so some of these guys, you know, they got to take that credit in the moral victory. I hear you, man, you know, but but you also got to respect the fact that not everyone could be champ, man. Not everyone could be champ. You know what I mean? Those people are special in that. And once we start realizing that, we'll probably start appreciating them more and more. Uh, but it takes time. I know it. Uh, all right. That was Alvaro. We going to see why. P. The crybabies is out. Matumbe, Makimbe, you crying right now. I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't get, I, I, I'm, I'm, let me be nice. I don't care or nor am I bothered by nothing no one's saying. Patreon pays Ness every month. I know they do because that shit came out my account on the, like the first, first, first. And I super chat. So I probably pay between $50 and $60 a month to Ness and Mike for what they do. See, I put my money where my mouth is. So I can say what the fuck I want. I ain't never asked to ask Tony Harrison shit. So if you don't like my question, I would not be offended if you didn't ask it. You hear it right now. Any question I ever ask anyone, if you don't ask it, I would not be offended. Because I don't come to this show to hear none of them niggas box. I mean, none of them niggas talk boxing. I don't care if they come on this interview. So please, and you have my permission, don't ask my goddamn question if it's going to offend the TVB audience. I don't care. That's not why the fuck I'm on this show. I'm on this show to spit my shit and entertain. Tony Harrison ain't got shit to do with that. And Tony Harrison talks a lot of shit, so I stand up for that man because he's a shit talker, just like me. He should be able to take a goddamn question when 80 to 90% of the questions are all positive for the man. It's simple. If Conor McGregor went on a fucking show after the Floyd fight, trust me, if they had fans asking questions, one of them fans would have asked him, hey man, how did the guy with the skinny little legs knock your ass out? They would have asked him that because that's what he put out there. Y'all can say whatever y'all want to say to me, man. It don't fucking affect me. I'm a fucking giant. I don't even, I don't even, man, you, man, how y'all go, how y'all go throw fucking stones at the motherfucking sun? You can't reach it. <laughs> Battle rap. Anybody who know that, you know exactly who said that shit. CYP out. Be mad. I don't, I don't, I don't really know what CYP said right there. I was listening to Layla Ali on, on Barack and, I, and I, I, uh, Man, it might be some smoke. She happening. coming out of retirement for Clarissa? How old is she, though? How old is 42. she? 42. She's like, hey. Damn. But, but what she said, though, she 20? might be out pricing herself. Huh? She might be out pricing herself. She said five, ten million. Oh, but she said she might be out pricing herself. No. I'm saying it. Oh, oh. She said she won five to ten. Yeah. That's a huge uh gap though, right? You supposed to say I want eight to ten, not five to ten. Hey man, make the alpha the zone. She they they put the zone on like uh Sean bruh, retweeted it. Bro, the, the zone. Hey, make this fight, you know what I'm saying? Bro, this could be a big fight. I heard a rumor. A lot of man, black women starting, man. I'm telling you, black women out here supporting each other at an all time high. So you put this shit on, man. This might go 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 viral in the hood. Real Layla Ali, the quote. Bro, Layla she's Ali. twenty-two years younger though, Don't bro. Even, damn, oh no, you is, said man. forty-two. Forty-two. She said she'll knock her out. <laughs> Literally, 
I will knock her out. That's how it, it, it'll end. I was like, ladies out here talking spicy on Akin Barack. Hey, man, listen, the difference between... How many years was George out the ring? Because it's different. He won a title at 40, so maybe we could think about it. But I think she's been out the ring like over 10 years, man. Yeah, man, she's been out the ring for a while. Come on, man. She wilding right now. Hey, listen, the zone throwing money at everybody else. Might as well throw some money she at Layla. The dice, man. Yo, that that'll bring in some subs, right? You promoted his, Muhammad Ali's daughter. Yeah. You can put that fuck? like on. on that like gotta Logan, bring some subscribers. Logan Paul and an AB card or something. Put all that, all that together. What way is she though? Yeah, Chris is gonna meet her anywhere. I'm telling man, Chris. Carissa's gonna meet her anywhere because she got she got the name. Uh, uh, Carissa, you right. know what I'm saying? She she the star right now. Can't meet her anywhere. Right Ain't now. Clarissa like 5'11 or some shit? 5'10? Yeah, she, yeah. And, and, and like, like, like by 6'2. I remember two, when, and when I, t I met her, she was pretty. Yeah, I'm she, tall, yeah. but she was pretty short compared to me. We, we met at the Barclays. Okay. But yeah, man, that'd be a nice little uh, scrapper if they could get that. Off the ground, but I I think it'll take time. You know what I'm saying? Like more and more people talk about it, more and more like people like Charlemagne retweet and put it on his IG. People will see it and you know what I'm saying, share it and and, I, and all that kind of shit. But I, I like the energy. You know what I'm saying? Now Carissa may see it and she may come back out and and, and say something. And uh, yeah, man, nice man, nice nice. I'm glad to see women's boxing, man, coming to where. They can make their own lane. They ain't got really, really, you know what I'm saying, worried about what the, what the men doing on being on men undercard them more, man. Like, this right here is a big fight for women out there, you know what I'm saying? Layla Ali, Carissa Shields, you know what I'm saying? Been, been animosity for a little while now. Like, the, the, the first time, you know what I'm saying, they, they had a little animosity, you know what I'm saying, with each other. I see you over, over listening to it, you know what I'm saying, smiling and shit. But, yeah, man, this ain't the first time, bro, like. I'm telling you, man, this could be a big fight. They the five ten. Oh, okay, so yeah, they they better uh be about in the same height range. They to get about like one or two tune ups. You know what I'm saying? The zone give us like a nice little care package, five to ten million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Look, but we give you two point five for both tune ups. Then we'll do that 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 five million for the uh, for the Carissa Shields fight. That's how you do it. I don't know, man. That's a lot of money. Cause I heard a rumor that Clarissa ain't even made a million. Man, they gave him a fucking Gennady fifteen million for for Rose. Like, yeah, but come on. but can you confirm has Clarissa made a million for Christina Hammer or for any of these fights? I I, I can neither confirm nor nor deny. I'm hearing she didn't. So you know to ask for five, you know that means where you putting Clarissa, at. and that's hard. Anyways, what I'm saying if, if Clarissa, who's done all she done, cause like. You know what I mean? Clarissa's done. She's yeah, done. She done. And she ain't they side though. I'm, I'm being real. Hey man, guess what? Last name. Guess if, why? If, guess why she's the A side to me, and I'm a campaign and she's the A side because without Clarissa, Layla Ali ain't got nothing. Without okay. Clarissa, they wouldn't even add on that show. What they gonna talk to her about? Uh, she got a new show coming up. <laughs> exactly. She was on Sway. Exactly. Uh, they ain't gonna, gonna be, the they ain't gonna be talking about boxing without Clarissa. They ain't gonna talk about boxing. They gonna be talking about exactly what you saying. Her new show coming up. Yeah, she Cause got, she, yeah. she's a talk show mom right now. She ain't no fighter. Clarissa's the fighter. I think the uh, challenge anytime. is gonna be for her, not for Clarissa. Bro, it's a reason why they the, asked. The pressure's Lito. on her, not for Clarissa. It's a reason why they asked Layla Ali though. Yeah, because they want to see. Why, they want to see. Do she want real glory? Why they they want to see. Do she want real glory? Years on a show. They want to. You know they want to see. Do she want real glory, or is she gonna keep living off her father's name? Oh wow! So she ain't had no career of her own. I ain't say she didn't, but Clarissa right, done more. Okay. Clarissa She's done probably. more in ten fights. I'm holding all my fingers up. She done more. Mm. We can't sit here. Like, what? Why, why are we acting like Layla is better than Clarissa or done more than Clarissa? I'm not, I'm not saying anything. You saying, because you call under the A side. So what? Based off her father? Name, nigga. It's off her, exactly. Off her father. Off her father. I ain't, I ain't say nothing about her father. I you said, said last, last name. name. Her last name is her, too. Man. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Clarissa is the quote. She I is her you. father. I, whoa. Yeah, Luke, oh. I am your father. Oh. oh, man. Yeah. Mother, mother. Greatest, yeah, nah, mother. man, greatest of all time, you know what I'm saying? So she got that name. She put the W in there. Man, she the quote. She the quote, she the quote but that's still a big fight. I hear you, man. Big fight for, for, for Layla. 
She wasn't. She, she yo. I bet you Layla wasn't even making the bread that Clarissa making now. Po- women's boxing popping now, bruh. It's popping now. It was. I can't even remember no women besides her and Christy Martin. Who the fuck did she? Oh, Ann Wolf that we ain't never see on TV. Who did she fight? Uh, she uh, she was on TV. <sighs> Man, I'm not even googling that, that shit unless Clarissa say the ink dry. The ink dry. Okay, let's go. We got movement. Uh, so we went to No Boomerang. What up? What up, No? Whoa, 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 whoa! Look, brother, this is what I'm trying to figure out, dog. Now we we remember the press conference and all this shit that Tony Harrison was talking. Like I'm talking about not regular shit. We talking about world Big class, shit. Shit. Bruh, But he talking world class shit to a world class fighter, not to a world class fan. Uh, he, Man, he ain't talking to a fan. Man. He talking to he talking to a dude that could take out all that disrespect right on him in the ring, and he did. What if that was Adrian Broner? What if that Adrian Broner came on the show like add the all this? That's the point. Done. That's the you point. Know? Adrian won't come. That's that's the point. Adrian won't come on the show. AJ won't come on the show. Charlos won't come on the show. Crawford won't come on the show. Saying it's our fault that AJ bitch ass don't want to come on the show. It's our fault. You, that what you saying right now? That it's our fault that AJ don't want to come on TBV. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm showing you a pattern. I'm showing you a pattern. Come back. I'm showing you a pattern of sensitive dudes, man. So if they if they at the top of the game and they can and they can show their sensitivity, we gotta assume that Harrison that, hey, can be sensitive. That, on TBV though, since we since I've been on this show, ain't nothing sensitive about TBV though. This ain't that type of show. I hear this you. This ain't Radio Raheem. I so this Radio Raheem. I this hear you. Out. I hear you. But we but, also but look, we also hey, don't want to add to that list of people that don't come on the show. Eddie Hearn don't come on the show. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But we don't want to add to that list. Man. We don't want to add to that list. That type of dude to let a question like that break him down. I do not scared to come back on. Bro, you know? bro, like bro, you, yo, if thing. that if that was Crawford today, you would have said he wasn't the type of dude. But guess what? He is right. He ain't been on in how many years? Earl, well, you know, Earl, that type of dude. Earl, that no, I ain't done. Earl, that type of dude, right? He ain't been on in how many years? Come on, bro. Like y'all acting like y'all fucking blind. If you've been rocking with the show, you see these dudes is sensitive. All I told Brona, you not pound for pound. Motherfucker, before you fought Mikey, you never was near being pound for pound, not ever in your fucking career. So how I'm wrong for that? What'd I do to Ken and, 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 and Sean? Nothing. Pick Keith. What'd I do to Danny? Pick Keith. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. They sensitive, bro. Stop. Y'all got to open up your eyes. At the end of the day, they coming to see you at the end of the day, dog. All right. They, they, they I, I, I bet. They come back bet. Hey, I know. So, so, so I'm going to start picking Fury from today. You rock out with me, and let's see what happens. Why are they going to come back on the show? Uh, <laughs> why are they going to come back on the show? You don't think, all right, so you don't think why they come back? I bet you I won't take that chance with your crazy ass. Y'all gambling. Y'all crazy. <laughs> we got a super, super check coming in from who else? Mr. CYP. And if I'm cheap, all of you super check my 60 right now. Go ahead or shut the fuck up with your nobody asses. Ain't nobody calling him cheap. Why he let, he let, You got to stop paying attention to the chat, CYP. He love it, man. He love them dudes he in the it, chat. Man. It makes him, hey, it makes CYP. I think they give him few right there, bro. They do. They That's do. a few. Uh, did we go to Stainless twice? Yes. All right, so we got to go to Bruce. What up, Bruce? Bruce. Bruce. What up? Can y'all hear me? I'm good. We hear you. Yeah, shit, I, I just popped in and shit, what's going on, man? I heard y'all talking crazy about Tony Harrison. What did, what did happen? Nah, he yeah, called, yeah, uh, we had him on an interview. Oh, shit, I got to rewind and check that out. Tony Harris, I think Tony Harris is a great fighter. I think he did his thing versus Charlo, just had a lapse in judgment. He won't, have that. He won't do that again, you see what I'm saying? But he, uh, in my opinion, he was winning that fight kind of easily, walking them down, and he put out, he put out the blueprint. 
So I hope uh, I hope Charlo opens up as a favorite versus J Rock, so J Rock can tap that ass and I can get paid. But um, but yeah, I mean that's shit. That that's all y'all was talking about. What else is going on? Uh, Joshua and Pula possibly being in uh, Istanbul, Turkey. They got okay, off, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, Joshua just need to go and dust him off so we can get that Joshua wild. I think we're going to see a different AJ. AJ going to sit down on that too and get Pula out of that because he's he not that good, to be honest. He okay, nah. but he ain't, he ain't that. See what I'm saying? I, I think agree. Joshua's going to get a chance to show out a little bit. So that that's a good one. Hey, did, did y'all touch on that? Uh, y'all seen that uh, that quote interview on um on the Breakfast Club? Yeah, man. Hey, that was a damn good interview, man. Hey, hey, it was. Um, it was. And then and then Leila Ali was on Sway the Boy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know y'all touched on that. Y'all didn't touch on that at all. Yeah, we touched on that. We just that. finished. You gonna have to rewind. Right about five minutes ago, we talked about that. Right now, yeah. hardcore too. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go and rewind. But shit, I know I'm gonna get that cut it. So y'all gonna have a good one. And shit, I'm. I'll be in the chat. For sure. Hey champ. man, Stainless only got one car. He just texts me like, Mike, what's up, bro? I thought ah. you had a good memory. You got a <laughs> bad memory. Come then. back. Yeah, that's what happened when you sober, man. You remember everything. So I remember. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all cats be smoking today. I gotta be out of rotation. But tomorrow I'm right back with y'all. Uh, as far as this whole question thing, uh, if I'm being honest, I do remember a time when even Wilder was like was, had stopped calling in and stopped fucking with you for a hot second until you squashed that. So even the strongest man can, can uh, you know what I'm saying, have an opinion about what you say about him. So I agree with you, man. It ain't, ain't no use in, uh, you know what I'm saying, putting putting the show in jeopardy or the opportunity to have more, more people call in. I respect CYP, too, with his answer. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like it's too much, just don't ask the question. I'm saying everybody getting a little bent out of shape about this shit right now. So straighten yourselves back up, man. That's too much. Uh, as I always say, please make sure you push that thumbs up. Share this in every episode of the Boxing Voice podcast because it's TBV for life. And if you ain't no Patreon, it's because you stupid. And shout out to El Camino. Peace. Man, Dom said he only got one call, too. Dom stunting like it like Dom. that. Dom said he got one, man. Oh, Bro, no. Dom got one on Skype and one on Blog Talk. There you go, Dom. You lying, man. Why you lying, Dom? We got a super chat coming in for Big Super Mix. He ain't even on Blog Talk no more. He on Skype. Skype, go ahead, Dom. Why are you stunting? Man, I ain't stunting. I'm dead. Look, look uh, you know, Because sometimes when I go on Blog Talk, you don't get me for my second call, so I go on Skype. Bruh. Cause you be smoking so much, so I'm not talking oh, shit. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. I quit smoking for this fight, so y'all all. all love it. <laughs> hey, I want to talk about Anthony Joshua and pull up since I didn't get to that. Um, it'd be a cool fight to watch for free. Um, you know, I think it'd be a cool little fight since he did say he want to warm up after and Louise. Huh? For what? If 19.99 a month for what? Design. Oh, for what? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. You representing man the zone. Um <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all. I'm just playing with y'all. I know y'all really got get real, real, you know, disrespected when I talk about the zone, so I won't even go there. Chill, bro. Um, we just get disrespected when you start talking about big black bats. Oh uh, no, nah, no, nah, I already talked about that, but uh Oh, I think uh, what I was basically trying to say is basically the big black bat back in the day they used to call a Batman. And you know how he comes in the ring, he don't talk to nobody, he just straight whoops ass. Uh, that's how I perceived him, you know, the big black bat, if you knew that. But maybe I should come bruh, at you bruh, when you know that. Bro, I watch all comic book movies, and I've never no, heard no yes, one call Joker Batman as, Joker as the Jim big Perry black says bat. The big black have, bat. And you have, refer but then, him but as, how, the Joker did refer it? to him as the big black bat. How hard is it just to type M-A-N at the end of that sentence? I know, and but I, I don't I, consider I him do the, put, the put big black bat, Batman. Like, man. Nah, I don't want to say that because then white people might get pissed because Batman's white or something. I don't know. So yeah. Batman, we're black. Yeah, you know. <laughs> if he's he running and you see him from behind, you you you'll, you'll think he black. Yo, I wonder would they ever do a black Batman? That's what Mr. I'm Patterson saying. Let's now. go. Huh? 
Robert, the Robert, black uh, Batman? Batman. Come on, man. man. Yeah, Robert Pat, but that he's white, bro. He's he's yeah, from uh, uh. What about that Twilight Zone. dude that was supposed to play uh, James Bond? No, he's Twilight, Mike. What are you talking about? Yeah, Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah. You know, what you mean Twilight, Twilight Zone. I'm fucking up. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I heard about uh Idris Elba. You know what I'm saying? Supposed to be playing James Bond. Or, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be Bond. perfect for Batman. Oh, he's gonna play James Bond. Yeah. Like nah, that year. fit. That fit. You know, he's from the UK anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he British and shit. Yeah. But he kind of old though, so maybe we get to do play back Black yeah, Panther. But, you know, but, but know. James Bond was always old, bro. Yeah, he's I, I was white too. He though. always old and always white. You ain't lying about that. But yeah, uh, Ness, you hear me? Yeah. I checked my mail today, man. You know, I you know what uh, <laughs> I got to say, man. I ain't got nothing in there. Yo. Cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Yo, let me tell you something. Yo, let me tell you something, right? So my girl's like, babe, what you going to do with, because the box is literally in the living room. I'm going to put a video. You seen them there. I'm going to put a video. They've been there in the dining room for like a year. They still there. Bro, I'd just rather meet up with motherfuckers than, than, than have to go to the post office, put all them damn shirts in the packet. Then I got to wait for their responses. I got to wait for uh, all these people to tell me they saw. Though I don't want to do that shit no more, man. I got the shirts there. You uh, Meet me at Border Wars. I got you. I yeah, got... Nah, but I'm going to mail your shit, yeah. Dom. Dom, I'm going to mail your shit. I got you, Smoking J. Franklin. Um... I got a few, man. I got like three people on a definite list, and then there's like probably 15 is about to hit me up after I just said this. Yeah, like, they bro, what's up? How I, make they it, how I get me. on a definite list? Yeah, they coming for me, man. They coming for me. Listen, um, I'm going to try. Dom, keep stalking me, man. Keep stalking me. You got me. I'm trying to do it this weekend for you, for sure. What size are you, Dom? Oh, you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll get that too, actually. You know, and let me uh, get one of the mugs. Nah, he ain't get. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he about to start ordering? You think this pop I want a keychain. Yo, what, 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 was this Menace to Society? He got a page or let two? Let me get nigga? one of them goddamn mugs. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, them, uh, them, <laughs> them coasters, too, man. Them, Bruh. them drink coasters. I do got some of those left though. I do still got some of those uh, TBV coasters. Uh, they not coasters. They they koozies, koozies for your oh, bed. Koozies, okay. Keep your bed cool or keep your coffee warm. You know what I'm saying? I still do got some of those. I gotta find it. It's somewhere in the attic. I got you, Dom. I just rather like not have to get you because it's, it's it's like more work. But I got you. I'm telling you, I got you. Yeah, and it's going to happen this week. We're going to put that shit in my calendar. This calendar's helped me out. I should have been using this. But, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to definitely put that in uh, and get it done. Today is what, Thursday? Today Thursday. Damn, man. Tomorrow that's 48 Friday. hours, Dom. We're going to set the limit to next Saturday. Because, <laughs> no, the post office closed at 12 around here on Saturdays. What about for you? Uh, yeah, I should, bro. I... I I probably you been to post office. You don't go to post I see. That's what like I'm saying. A number, uh, Yo, a number of times in my that past year, probably like once or twice. Brother, people think it's nothing because they don't go until you got to go. You and then they don't out, like man. you. They don't like you. You come in there with 20, 30 packages. Bro, them ladies close the window on you, man. I'm telling you, you I've been there. You got to do that pickup, man. I had them folks come pick your shit up for you. And back in the day, I thought it was cool, right? Like, oh, you know, I'm going to make a video, show the patrons. Yo, you you get, yo, they want to send you to jail for recording yeah, in the post you, office. Can't, yeah, you can't record post office. Bro, it's so much shit that I ain't know. So you end up not wanting to go to the fucking post office, man. Yeah, because they maybe think you may be recording somebody information. Or and let me like tell that. you something else, bro. Is it me or do somebody need to check on the post office? What you mean check on the post office? Bro, why they got so many fucking breaks? It ain't just like lunch for them motherfuckers. Every time you come back, is a sign to say be back in like 15 minutes or but some that, shit. That bitch, that bitch like, like I, I know it's not open to the public 24 hours, but that motherfucker around 24 hours. Cause them, no, nigga, but you, you talking about the, the box, though. You talking about putting in the outside box. But no, nah, 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 bro, you can walk in the post office nigga, any, any time of day. Nah, hell like, no. 
My po- my post my post office got a door, bro. That's that's locked when it, when it's when For it's real? with a, with a sign to tell you the hours. Absolutely, my nigga. But look, but look, regardless, I gotta go in because I gotta weigh it. Everybody live in different places. I'm I'm he. I gotta send his shit to the West Coast. His shit gonna be more than a nigga in Boston. So I gotta go in. Oh, yeah. They don't understand how the time. I'm telling you, I'm not doing that no more. After I get rid of whoever I owe, don't ask for shit. I'm no more post office next, huh? No more. You better get, you be, I, I, look, people get more shirts and shit out of me. I done gave out bags, bro. I gave Everlast bags, right? Everlast tote bags, right? Everlast tote bags, Everlast shirt, Border Wars shirt, and TBV shirt in the last Border Wars. Yeah. And and depreciation, like shit, you get way more than that. But when like we, when we did our live show at at the uh, hell yeah, bar house, all the live the shows we gave house. our hella shirts. Yeah, but yo, man, man, we could not even be fighting again, man. Like come on, we're not even trying to get this. Uh, Menta. Try and get this motherfucking uh, what what, what it's called? That's Chivas. You know, some big, big and the first the quarter Rigas. though, and the first quarter. That's yeah, what Dan Rayfield Rigas, was man. saying, I believe. Got that? What is the Irish? What were them Irish? What Irish whiskey, Chivas? Oh, I don't know. That shit rocking though. I've been. I was drinking that before we got sponsored, bro. Like, oh, for real? Yeah, that's some Dominican shit. I tried not, that shit. Not uh... Dominican in the sense that like um we make it or anything like that. It's just a, a drink that we've we've been drinking like ever the since I was like seventeen. Like my dudes and them was drinking that shit. Put it ain't on. bad though. It ain't nah, bad. It with, ain't. Like Coke. You know I like saying? it. I like it with cranberry, um okay. or Red Bull. You know Red what I mean? Bull. I don't mm. like it straight up. That ain't that ain't for me straight up. That ain't for me straight up. I know the first time we went down to that gym, nigga, everything was on was uh, on, on go. Next day they're like, nah, just the cheapest, man. Yeah, y'all, cause y'all, y'all motherfuckers <laughs> start ordering from the kitchen, Bruh, that, and that, then that, and, and then people start ordering uh, outside I'm of cheapest. Then and them eating them like, bro, y'all eating what's going on. Bro, hey yo, how we sponsored by Chivas, but they want to drink Hennessy and Red. It's like, come on, you disrespecting the label, champ. You you wear Interscope, you got Def Jam shirts. Get out of here, man. Um, let me and go to see why. I pe- boy. Huh? And so at the end, though, flowing that day, boy. And it was like, bro, that tab, be- that tab was crazy. <laughs> yo, um, anyway. Man, shout out Chivas, man. I'm like, man, my dogs, man. And, and, and the Chivas <laughs> girls, too, man. Big up to them Chivas nah, girls. Nah, I bro. love I love the little setup, man. I always regret that I didn't do the little ring walk. Remember, they had the setup booth where you could do the ring walk with oh, the yeah. gloves and the belt, and they record you professionally. Yo, the zone doing some dope shit too. I remember that shit uh, we did with Doomy at yeah, the Yeah, uh, man, that punching that machine. Sh- that's that's a good ass way to get people's email. They were smart. That's a good ass way to motherfucking get in shape too. And, oh yeah, and like mean, box. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Throw your punches right. Yeah, yeah but you, who got the money for the machine? Oh uh, yeah, true. You know, they 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 were smart to bring that to get them emails. It's like, yo, you got the zone. That's what they want them uh, emails for. Oh uh, yeah, you want a shirt? You want a you want a Canelo tile? Just give me an email. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You get your Canelo tile. Yeah, 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 yeah. CYP, close us out, man. We up out of here. We out of here. CYP. A good night. I want y'all to have a good night. I want y'all to kiss kiss your babies, kiss your wives, and remember when you wake up, you will hear me again spitting that same shit, spitting that same ether, not giving a fuck who it offends. Because at the end of the day, CYP do his own thing, and I'm gonna pay my bill on time too. For all you cheapskate, freeloading ass, workout free, fucking window shopping ass motherfuckers in the chat who really think you're important. I love you. Too bad, that's done. <laughs> CYP out. All right. Now, you know, look, uh the AJ question is 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 a troll to me. You know what I mean? But that one is like the funny one. That shit get that shit get fighters laughing. You know, so you know, look, we've learned early on. You got to take the good the bad with CYP, man. At least uh, at least he said like, look, you don't want to ask it, don't ask it. I just never like not doing that, you know what I mean? Like I like you know what I mean? You wanted to ask him, son. I want, I, want, I, I, I want to hear it too. Sometimes I just, I'm fearful. I'm fearful, man. I, I've seen a lot of dudes come and go, man. I've seen a lot of dudes come and go, and uh, it sucks when you want to get somebody and then you don't even know. I'm telling you, you don't even know you offended them, 
And then it's like, yo, you can't even get in touch. It's like, what the fuck? Bruh, I'm telling you, I don't even know. It's, I got a list of motherfuckers I could tell you that don't, that I don't know what I done did. Uh, but yeah, man, we gonna keep working on the relationships. You know what I mean? Gonna keep those dudes in the prayers. Ask the big guy to mend those relationships. And hopefully we can get the Crawfords of the world on the show and the AJs, man. Uh, the motherfucking Erickson Lubins and Charlos. Who else, Mike? Who else we missing on here, man? Hard to get Earl. motherfuckers. Earl Spence, man. Earl. Yo, need to play that DMX for Earl. Andy Ruiz. Used to be. Kinda nah, Andy, 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 Andy's different. Andy, I'm kind of let down. He came back. Andy is the, exactly. He's the ones that we talk about. It's like you win the belt and now it's like, nah. And we reached out before anybody was on your coattail. Nobody. Nobody. They wasn't talking about the Andy stir. Not the destroyer. Nah. It's all Andy good. Chips, you know it's all me? good. Used to be my dog. Thought you would die with me. We got a super chat coming in from uh, this nigga. Dog. I got you, bro. I'm gonna read the super chat. Nigga. I ain't gonna leave it out. This guy gonna text me on scary. Read my super chat. Now, now maybe don't even want to read it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, get Tyson childbearing hips fury on the show. And then you spell bearing wrong. It's B E A R I N G, not B barring. Barring hips. Yeah, so, yeah, man, Tyson is, uh, you know, he's another one, bro. You know, he, he answers when he want to, man. Yeah. But that, that was an epic show, boy, that day right there. That, they, they go down in YouTube boxing history, man. Yo, Eddie, I'm... Tyson, and fucking Deontay. I'm sitting back watching as a fan, like, what the fuck is going on on that channel? I reached out to Sam Jones, too. He he He's down. Charles Who's Sam Jones again? Manager of Joe Joyce. Oh wow, yeah, Sam. Okay, Sam Jones. Okay, yeah. What's next for Joe, man? What? What? what, what I mean, what's the plan? ain't there any negotiations with Dubois? Man, they've been doing that for a while now. Sam, I think mean, Joe Joyce supposed to be fighting like Idris Cabell. I don't fucking know. Idris Cabell. Oh, the heavyweight. He signed yeah. a top rank too. Top rank slowly getting, but I mean, I mean, Eddie, get, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie got the bigger names though. Yeah, it's the, I mean, Eddie got... He got the bigger name. Yeah, he got the bigger name, but PBC ain't, ain't too far off. No, no, Andy. no. I'm not saying between them all. I'm just saying, like, in terms of people signing heavyweights. Oh, uh, yeah. But, I mean, I think he still got the heavyweights over over PBC heavyweights too, right? I mean, I mean, we got Andy. We got Brazil. We got Oh, Kornaki. yeah, they got Andy. And they got, got Kornaki. We got Wilder. Joe Washington boosted back up. Yeah, he boosted Not a high, bit. though, but he's at Ch least there. And then we're going to have a winner of him and Charles Martin, so it's still a player. Yeah. Chris Ariola gave a good account of himself last time, even though he's not. Yo, Chris you know need that, that, that Travis Kaufman comeback, man. Yeah, man. Kaufman did a fight. How long uh, Kaufman been out the ring? Is it over a year? Uh, I thought he fought again after the Ortiz fight, didn't he? Or did he not? I oh, thought he got one in after the Ortiz fight. I, I could be wrong. Don't remember. But yeah, and they still do the business with Christian Hammer. Don't, don't, don't forget about him. Christian Hammer. Christian. Who, who going to do business with Christian Hammer? PBC, I think. Then they got um, FA coming up. You know what I'm saying? Still got FA coming up. He gonna be a player pretty soon. They can't can't hide him from the world too long. I'd rather see someone. I don't know Hammer that. I don't know for who though. I look man, whatever man. They got Luis Ortiz too. We didn't even mention him. Yeah, That's we crazy. Didn't Luis Ortiz, damn. That's crazy. Yeah, I wonder who's gonna away. fight him though, man. Is anybody gonna give him a fight? That's why I was asking uh, Tony. Like, do you think anybody gonna give you a fight based on how how good you look? Oh, and based on how good Ortiz was boxing, it's going to be tough for Ortiz. I mean, Who's PBC going to have to force somebody to fight Ortiz. Who on that PBC side? It might be Brazil. Yeah, Brazil can't get that Kobanaki fight. He might as well. But he yeah, probably he don't want that smoke. Yeah, but man, at the end of the day, I mean, what you going to do? Like, you ain't got many options uh, of yourself. He ducked the interview today, bro. Y'all here ducking interviews and shit. I mean, yeah, Brazil did. <laughs> you faked that on a little bit. But yeah, man, that's pretty much all, Yo, all I got, man. I think AJ shut my 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 Freddie Cunningham interview down too. I had his manager super excited to come on the show, and then all of a sudden, Darky, like, nah, dog. 
We going uh, we going to leave that we going to leave that for another time. AJ managed And I really wanted that. I really wanted that story cuz Freddie Cunningham is a young looking motherfucker. If he tells me he's over 35, I'd be shocked. That's big, man. To be managing that dude. A lot of people that work in the, on AJ boxing, you know what I'm saying, is uh people that AJ considered you know what I'm saying, family and friends, so a lot of those guys are, are around the same age. Same thing you seen like LeBron doing. When he came up and started uh, clutch, uh, clutch sports, like put a lot of uh, of his partners on. So I could uh, commend AJ for doing the same thing. Like we see Wilder do, you know what I'm saying? He put Chris and uh and uh oh my guy, what's my guy name? Damn, what's my guy name? Fuck. Uh, True Fit. Oh, um, Joey Scott. Joey, I was gonna say Jay, like motherfucker, but it's Joey. Yo, yes, uh, anyway, we'll talk off air about that. But I think that's about it, man. We rocked out for four hours for y'all, man. Show the love. Mm-hmm. All we ask is that you share the show. Just share smash it. Smash thumbs up. That's smash it. Smash that thumbs up. Share it. Man, you want to go a step further and support? Cool. Do that on Patreon. You know, don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel right here at youtube.com forward slash The Boxing Voice. Hit the backup channel because you know we suffered a whole week suspension for some bogus shit that they still have not gotten back to me on. Uh, so, yeah, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash um, Nestor Gibbs. And don't forget to subscribe to Mike on his channel. He covers everything. Dude's always live. Mike's a worker. Mike, you don't play. You you out here covering rugby, champ. That shit fun to watch, man. <laughs> like... The fucking hits and shit, man. Just like football, just with no pads. That's but yeah, man. yo. You on anything moving? I mean, man. I get a good, good fucking watch time on the bitches. So that's why they they get pumped out. You know what I'm saying? Follow me on IG at Grouse1911 or on Twitter at Grouse2312. And uh, yeah, man, big ups to everybody out there in the chat, man. Chase Athletics, you know what I'm saying? Number one streetwear, Romanian Mike, you know what I'm saying? Just Jonathan Whitterbird, my guy CYP. Everybody out there who I always support this show, Dom. Big ups to everybody who sent a uh, super chat, man. We appreciate y'all. And yeah, follow me on on YouTube at Mike on Sports, man. And uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll see y'all in the morning, man. Should be a nice, nice day uh, of uh, interviews tomorrow too, right? Man, I think yes, we, we, sir. Guys, let me guys uh, schedule. Let, 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 let me, me look real quick on the camera. See, we got in the morning. Let me see. Uh, nine a.m. We got y'all, yeah, Yahoo. Yeah, Rock, Rock Blackwell. Blackwell, heavyweight, going to be fine for an IBO uh, title. We got Castillo Clayton. Yes, sir. And we got Ned's favorite fighter, you know what I'm saying, over the Tolani past year. Minj? Igis Kavalowski. Oh, you know okay. He's on the show. Okay. Is on the show okay. Tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? So be Girl, on the watch yo. out, man. Hit that uh, su- subscribe bell, that notification bell, whatever you got to do to make sure that when we go live, you go live with us. You get that that notification. You don't want to miss them interviews. And you just never know, man. It's show business. We might get someone else on because so many people had to reschedule, right? Like, who we missed? Who we missed? We missed the whole so Tuesday. Pa- Patrick uh, Texter. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. We're going to have to... Re- no, we... Because that... We... we, we, we it was Spanish, yeah, no. Nah, not only that. It was really Tony, bro. Tony was late, so we yeah. got... Tony ate it all into his time. And then we had to reschedule Joshua Griff from the morning to the night. So he just... No, and then we had to push him back again because of Tony. He was yeah. supposed to come on at 8.30. Patrick was supposed to be 8 and and and, and Tony at 7.30. So, the show business, man. Like when shit start going good, like you don't want to break up break up a good thing. You know, so I think Tony was having fun. We were having fun with Tony. So uh, yeah, I got to schedule. Saying, uh, great... Sorry, go. I said Joshua uh, gave a great interview too, so. You know, we, we are going to have Steven Espinoza. So his post is in Patreon. Uh, he got back to me. It's just like slow drag. It's like one email every fucking two days, bro. Hopefully, we Hopefully can graduate we, we from emails. Post. You know what I mean? Hopefully, Hopefully CYP get... doesn't have something crazy in there where we could graduate from emails and maybe Hopefully get him on the phone quicker. We can get him before uh, next week, vamp up, because you know Danny Garcia back. Matter of fact, you know what? I think he's scheduled. I, th- I think he's scheduled. When is the show box? Oh, that's tomorrow. The show box tomorrow night. Bro, he was supposed to come on today. Uh, he not on the calendar at all. No, I know. I know. They never uh, got back, I bet. Let me double check. But I know that's what it was because uh, they, they wanted this day. 
And I definitely said yes. Hell yeah, man. Steven, you know what I'm saying? We got some things I want to talk to old Steven about, like... I mean, numbers, I've been man. one of them on since the Javante shit, man. They let that shit kind of die down, bro. I just want to talk about the numbers, man. Like, bro, my man gained weight quick, too. You seen him on the PBC yeah. show? Whoa, I don't know if it was that his cheeks was heavy or it was the jewelry blinging off his face. I don't know, but them, I'm like, wow. He was glowing. <laughs> yeah, growing. What'd you say? <laughs> Glow, I said glowing. Oh, and I thought you said growing. I was say, yeah, before our eyes. Yeah, eating good, man. Bro, left field. Did you see that there's going to be like a new Ghostbusters? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen that preview on, on, on YouTube, but I ain't, I ain't ever click on it. I was like, Ghostbusters, man, I, I wasn't really a fan of that shit, man. Me neither. I don't understand how they keep making some of these old, like, like where's the fucking new writers at? Originality, bro? yeah, man, yeah. Watch that feed, oh, man. Oh, no, no, no. We good. We good, y'all. He said, how about late Tuesday? Night? Yup. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Well, I told him it would work. And yeah. So, man, so look I, forward I'm to waiting, that, man. I'm waiting on that response, so. And don't forget, if you want to ask Steven, ask him a question, and you're on Patreon, and you, and you don't see the post, just keep on scrolling down. Yeah, You'll get the app, man. Later. Get the app so you could do it on the road. Because uh, you know, look, I'm I'm sure Harrison felt good to hear all those questions, you know, um, and, and you know, I guess it would suck when we say we got questions from the people and it's only like three people and shit. Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah, man, we out. And that's GCO Instagram and Twitter catches Monday. I mean, tomorrow morning. Peace out. Do say.